Section 21 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version. Joshua, chapters 11 to 21. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Your reader, Michael Armenta. Chapter 11. And it came to pass, when Jabin, king of Hazor, had heard those things, that he sent to Jobab, king of Madon, and to the king of Shimron, and to the king of Egshaph, and to the kings that were on the north of the mountains, and of the plains south of Chinroth, and in the valley, and in the borders of Dor on the west, and to the Canaanite on the east, and on the west, and to the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Jebusite in the mountains, and to the Hivite under Hermon, in the land of Mizpeh. And they went out, they and all their hosts with them, much people, even as the sand that is upon the seashore in multitude, with horses and chariots very many. And when all these kings were met together, they came and pitched together at the waters of Merom to fight against Israel. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Be not afraid because of them, for to-morrow about this time will I deliver them up all slain before Israel. Thou shalt huff their horses, and burn their chariots with fire. So Joshua came, and all the people of war with him, against them by the waters of Merom suddenly, and they fell upon them. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Israel, who smote them, and chased them unto great Zidon, and unto misrephoth Maim, and unto the valley of Mizpah eastward. And they smote them, until they left them none remaining. And Joshua did unto them as the Lord bade him. He huffed their horses, and burnt their chariots with fire. And Joshua at that time turned back and took Hazor, and smote the king thereof with the sword. For Hazor before time was the head of all those kingdoms, and they smote all the souls that were therein, with the edge of the sword, utterly destroying them. There was not any left to breathe, and he burnt Hazor with fire. And all the cities of those kings, and all the kings of them, did Joshua take, and smote them with the edge of the sword, and he utterly destroyed them as Moses the servant of the Lord commanded. But as for the cities that stood still in their strength, Israel burned none of them, save Hazor only, that did Joshua burn. And all the spoil of these cities, and the cattle, the children of Israel took for a prey unto themselves. But every man they smote with the edge of the sword, until they had destroyed them. Neither left they any to breathe. As the Lord commanded Moses his servant, so did Moses command Joshua, and so did Joshua. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. So Joshua took all that land, the hills, and all the south country, and all the land of Goshen, and the valley, and the plain, and the mountain of Israel, and the valley of the same, even from the Mount Halak, that goeth up to Seir, even unto Balgad, in the valley of Lebanon, under Mount Hermon. And all their kings he took, and smote them, and slew them. Joshua made war a long time with all those kings. There was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel, save the Hivites, 
the inhabitants of Gibeon. All other they took in battle, for it was of the Lord to harden their hearts, that they should come against Israel in battle, that he might destroy them utterly. There was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel, save the Hivites, the inhabitants of Gibeon. All other they took in battle, for it was of the Lord to harden their hearts, that they should come against Israel in battle, that he might destroy them utterly, and that they might have no favor, but that he might destroy them, as the Lord commanded Moses. And at that time came Joshua, and cut off the Anakims from the mountains, from Hebron, from Debir, from Anab, and from all the mountains of Judah, and from all the mountains of Israel. Joshua destroyed them utterly with their cities. There was none of the Anakims left in the land of the children of Israel. Only in Gaza, in Gath, and in Ashdod there remained. So Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord said unto Moses. And Joshua gave it for an inheritance unto Israel, according to their divisions by their tribes. And the land rested from war. Chapter 12 Now these are the kings of the land which the children of Israel smote, and possessed their land on the other side Jordan, toward the rising of the sun, from the river Arnon unto Mount Hermon, and all the plain on the east. Sihon, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Heshbon, and ruled from Eroer, which is upon the bank of the river Arnon, and from the middle of the river, and from half Gilead, even unto the river Jabbok, which is the border of the children of Ammon, and from the plain to the sea of Chinneroth on the east, and unto the sea of the plain, even the salt sea on the east, the way to Beth Jeshemoth, and from the south under Ashdoth Pisgah, and the coast of Og, king of Bashan, which was the remnant of the giants that dwelt at Ashtaroth and at Idre, and reigned in Mount Hermon, and in Salca, and in all Bashan, unto the border of the Jeshurites and the Machathites, and half Gilead, the border of Sihon, king of Heshbon. Them did Moses, the servant of the Lord, and the children of Israel smite, and Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave it for a possession unto the Reubenites, and the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. And these are the kings of the country which Joshua and the children of Israel smote on this side Jordan, on the west, from Balgad in the valley of Lebanon, even unto the mount Halak, that goeth up to Seir, which Joshua gave unto the tribes of Israel for a possession according to their divisions, in the mountains, and in the valleys, and in the plains, and in the springs, and in the wilderness, and in the south country, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Canaanites, the Parasites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, the king of Jericho, one, the king of Ai, which is beside Bethel, one, the king of Jerusalem, one, the king of Hebron, one, the king of Jarmuth, one, the king of Lachish, one, the king of Eglon, one, the king of Gezer, one, the king of Debir, one, the king of Geder, one, the king of Hormah, one, the king of Arad, one, the king of Libna, one, the king of Adullam, one, the king of Machida, one, the king of Bethel, 
one the king of tapua one the king of hefer one the king of aphek one the king of lasheron one the king of madon one the king of hazor one the king of shimron meron one the king of akshaf one the king of tanak one the king of shimron meron one the king of akshaf one the king of tanak one the king of megiddo one the king of kadesh one the king of jachnium of carmel one the king of dor in the coast of dor one the king of the nations of gilgal one the king of tirza one all the kings thirty and one chapter thirteen now joshua was old and stricken in years and the lord said unto him thou art old and stricken in years and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed this is the land that yet remaineth all the borders of the philistines and all jeshurai from sihor which is before egypt even unto the borders of ekron northward which is counted to the canaanite five lords of the philistines the gazathites and the ashdathites the eshkelonites the gittites and the ekronites also the avites from the south all the land of the canaanites and mira that is beside the sidonians unto aphek to the borders of the amorites and the land of the Giblites, and all Lebanon, toward the sun rising, from Balgad under Mount Hermon, unto the entering into Hamoth. All the inhabitants of the hill country, from Lebanon unto Misrephoth Maim, and all the Sidonians, them will I drive out from before the children of Israel. Only Divide thou it by lot unto the Israelites for an inheritance, as I have commanded thee. Now therefore divide this land for an inheritance unto the nine tribes, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, with whom the Reubenites and the Gadites have received their inheritance, which Moses gave them beyond Jordan eastward even as Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave them. From Eroir, that is upon the bank of the river Arnon, and the city that is in the midst of the river, and all the plain of Mediba unto Dibon, and all the cities of Sihon, king of the Amorites, which reigned in Heshbon, unto the border of the children of Ammon, and Gilead, and the border of the Cheshurites, and the Machathites, and all Mount Hermon, and all Bashan unto Salca, all the kingdom of Og in Bashan, which reigned in Ashtaroth and in Idri, who remained of the remnant of the giants. For these did Moses smite, and cast them out. Nevertheless the children of Israel expelled not the Cheshurites, nor the Machathites, but the Jeshurites and the Machathites dwell among the Israelites until this day. Only unto the tribes of Levi he gave none inheritance. The sacrifices of the Lord God of Israel made by fire are their inheritance, as he said unto them. And Moses gave unto the tribe of the children of Reuben, inheritance according to their families and their coast was from eror that is on the bank of the river arnon and the city that is in the midst of the river and all the plain by mediba heshbon and all her cities that are in the plain dibon and bamothbal and beth balmion and jehazah 
and Kedemoth, and Mephath, and Kirjathim, and Saigma, and Zareth Shahar, in the mount of the valley, and Beth Peor, and Ashdoth Pisgah, and Beth Jashimoth, and all the cities of the plain, and all the kingdom of Sihon, king of the Amorites, which reigned in Heshbon, whom Moses smote with the princes of Midian, Evi, and Rechem, and Zur, and Hur, and Reba, which were dukes of Sihon, dwelling in the country. Balaam also, the son of Beor the soothsayer, did the children of Israel slay with the sword, among them that were slain by them. And the border of the children of Reuben was Jordan, and the border thereof. This was the inheritance of the children of Reuben after their families, the cities and the villages thereof. And Moses gave inheritance unto the tribe of Gad, even unto the children of Gad, according to their families. And their coast was Jazer, and all the cities of Gilead, and half the land of the children of Ammon, unto Eror, that is before Reba, and from Heshbon unto Ramath Mizpeh, and Betonim, and from Mahanaim unto the border of Debir, and in the valley Beth Aram, and Beth Nimrah, and Succoth, and Zaphon, the rest of the kingdom of Sihon, king of Heshbon, Jordan, and his border, even unto the edge of the sea of Chinnereth, on the other side Jordan eastward, this is the inheritance of the children of Gad, after their families, the cities and their villages. And Moses gave inheritance unto the half-tribe of Manasseh, and this was the possession of the half-tribe of the children of Manasseh by their families. And their coast was from Mahanaim, all Bashan, all the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, and all the towns of Jair, which are in Bashan, three score cities, and half Gilead, and Ashtaroth, and Idre, cities of the kingdom of Og in Bashan, were pertaining unto the children of Machir, the son of Manasseh, even to the one half of the children of Machir, by their families. These are the countries which Moses did distribute for inheritance in the plains of Moab, on the other side Jordan, by Jericho eastward. But unto the tribe of Levi, Moses gave not any inheritance. The Lord God of Israel was their inheritance, as he said unto them. Chapter 14 And these are the countries which the children of Israel inherited in the land of Canaan, which Eleazar the priest, and Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel, distributed for inheritance to them. By lot was their inheritance, as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses, for the nine tribes and for the half-tribe, for Moses had given the inheritance of two tribes and an half-tribe on the other side Jordan. But unto the Levites he gave none inheritance among them, for the children of Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. Therefore they gave no part unto the Levites in the land, save cities to dwell in, with their suburbs for their cattle, and for their substance. As the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea? 
Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kiddish Barnea to espy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God, and Moses swear on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's for ever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, Lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now, for war both to go out and to come in. Now therefore give me this mountain, whereof the Lord spake in that day, for thou heardest in the day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced, if so be, the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him, and gave unto Caleb the son of Jephunneh Hebron for an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, unto this day, because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron before was Kirjath Arba, which Arba was a great man among the Anakims. And the land had rest from war. Chapter 15 this then was the lot of the tribe of the children of Judah by their families, even to the border of Edom. The wilderness of Zin southward was the uttermost part of the south coast. And their south border was from the shore of the salt sea, from the bay that looketh southward. And it went out to the south side to Malehakribim, and passed along to Zin, and ascended up on the south side unto Kadesh Barnea, and passed along to Hezron, and went up to Adar, and fetched a compass to Karka. From thence it passed toward Asmon, and went out unto the river of Egypt. Go back. From thence it passed toward Asmon, and went out unto the river of Egypt, and the goings out of that coast were at the sea. This shall be your south coast. And the east border was the salt sea, even unto the end of Jordan. And their border in the north quarter was from the bay of the sea at the uttermost part of Jordan. And the border went up to beth Hogla and passed along by the north of beth Haraba and the border went up to the stone of Bohan, the son of Reuben. And the border went up toward Debir from the valley of Achor, and so northward, looking toward Gilgal, that is, before the going up to Adumim, which is on the south side of the river. And the border passed toward the waters of Enshemesh, and the goings out, therefore, were at Enrogel. And the border went up by the valley of the son of Hinnom, unto the south side of the Jebusite. The same is Jerusalem. And the border went up to the top of the mountain that lieth before the valley of Hinnom, westward, which is at the end of the valley of the giants, northward. And the border was drawn from the top of the hill unto the fountain of the water of Nephtoah and went out to the cities of Mount Ephron, and the border was drawn to Bela, which is kirjath Jearim. And the border compassed from Bela westward unto Mount Seir, 
and passed along unto the side of Mount Jerum, which is Cheselon, on the north side, and went down to Beth Shemesh, and passed on to Timnah, and the border went out unto the side of Ekron northward, and the border was drawn to Shikron, and passed along to Mount Bela, and went out unto Jabneel, and the goings out of the border were at the sea, and the west border was to the great sea, and the coast thereof. This is the coast of the children of Judah, round about according to their families. And unto Caleb the son of Jephunneh he gave a part among the children of Judah, according to the commandment of the Lord to Joshua. Even the city of Arba, the father of Anak, which city is Hebron. And Caleb drove thence the three sons of Anak, Sheshai and Ahimam and Talmai, the children of Anak. And he went up thence to the inhabitants of Debir, and the name of Debir before was kirjath -Sefer. And Caleb said, He that smiteth kirjath -Sefer and taketh it, to him I will give Aksa, my daughter, to wife. And Othniel, the son of Kenaz, the brother of Caleb, took it. And he gave him Aksa, his daughter, to wife. And it came to pass, as she came unto him, that she moved him to ask of her father a field. And she lighted off her ass, and Caleb said unto her, What wouldest thou? Who answered, Give me a blessing, for thou hast given me a south land. Give me also springs of water. And he gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Judah, according to their families. And the uttermost cities of the tribe of the children of Judah, toward the coast of Edom southward, were Kabzeel, and Eder, and Jagur, and Kaina, and Daimona, and Adeda, and Kadesh, and Hazor, and Ithnan, Ziph, and Telem, and Beeloth, and Hazor, Hadeta, and Kerioth, and Hezron, which is Hazor, Amam, and Shema, and Molida, and Hazargada, and Heshman, and Bethpalet, and Hazar Shual, and Beersheba, and Bizjothja, Bela, and Iam, and Azam, and Eltolad, and Chisil, and Horma, and Zyklag, and Madmena, and Sainsana, and Lebaioth, and Shilhim, and Ain, and Remon. All the cities are twenty and nine, with their villages. And in the valley, Eshteol, and Zoria, and Eshna, and Zenoa, and Enganim, Tapua, and Enam, Jarmuth, and Adulam, Soko, and Azeka, and Sherem, and Adithim, and Gidera, and Gidorotheim, fourteen cities with their villages. Zenan, and Hadesha, and Migdalgad, and Dilian, and Mizpah, and Jokthil, Lachish, and Bosketh, and Eglon, and Cabon, and Lamam, and Kaithlish, and Gedaroth, Beth Dagon, and Nema, and Makida, sixteen cities with their villages. Libna, and Ether, and Ashan, and Jiptha, and Ashna, and Nezib, and Kalan, and Akzib, and Merisha, nine cities with their villages. Ekron, with her towns and her villages. From Ekron even unto the sea, all that lay near Ashdod, with their villages. Ashdod, with her towns and her villages, 
Gaza with her towns and her villages, unto the river of Egypt, and the great sea, and the border thereof. And in the mountains Shamir, and Chetir, and Soko, and Dana, and kirjath Sena, which is Debir, and Anab, and Eshtimo, and Anim, and Goshen, and Holon, and Gilo, eleven cities with their villages. Arab, and Duma, and Eshian, and Janum, and Bethtapua, and Apheka, and Humta, and Kijarthaba, which is Hebron, and Zior, nine cities with their villages, Maon, Carmel, and Zaph, and Jetta, and Jezreel, and Jokdeam, and Zanoa, Cain, Gibeah, and Timnah, ten cities with their villages, Halehul, Bethzur, and Gidor, and Merath, and Bethanoth, and Eltikon, six cities with their villages, Kirjath Baal, which is Kirjath Jerm, and Repa, two cities with their villages, in the wilderness, Beth Harapa, Maiden, and Sekaka, and Nibshan, and the city of Salt, and Engedi, six cities with their villages. As for the Jebusites, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the children of Judah could not drive them out, but the Jebusites dwell with the children of Judah at Jerusalem unto this day. Chapter 16 And the lot of the children of Joseph fell from Jordan by Jericho unto the water of Jericho on the east, to the wilderness that goeth up from Jericho throughout Mount Bethel, and goeth out from Bethel to Luz, and passeth along unto the borders of Archai to Ataroth, and goeth down westward to the coast of Japhletai, unto the coast of Bethhoron, the nether, and to Gezer, and the goings out thereof are at the sea. So the children of Joseph, Manasseh, and Ephraim took their inheritance. And the border of the children of Ephraim, according to their families, was thus. Even the border of their inheritance on the east side was Atarothadar, unto Beth Horon, the upper. And the border went out toward the sea to Michmetha, on the north side. And the border went about eastward unto Tanath Shiloh, and passed by it on the east to Janoha. And it went down from Janoha to Ataroth, and to Narath, and came to Jericho, and went out at Jordan. The border went out from Tapua, westward unto the river Cana, and the goings out thereof were at the sea. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Ephraim by their families. And the separate cities for the children of Ephraim were among the inheritance of the children of Manasseh, all the cities with their villages. And they drave not out the Canaanites that dwell in Gezer. But the Canaanites dwell among the Ephraimites unto this day and serve under tribute. Chapter 17 There was also a lot for the tribe of Manasseh, for he was the firstborn of Joseph, to wit, for Mekir was the firstborn of Manasseh, the father of Gilead, because he was a man of war. Therefore he had Gilead and Bashan, there was also a lot for the rest of the children of Manasseh by their families, for the children of Ebiezer, and for the children of Helek, and for the children of Azrael, and for the children of Shechem, and for the children of Hefer, and for the children of Shemida. These were the male children of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, by their families. But the Silophahad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, 
the son of Manasseh, had no sons, but daughters, and these are the names of his daughters, Mehilah, and Noah, and Hogla, and Milcah, and Tirzah. And they came near before Eleazar the priest, and before Joshua the son of Nun, and before the princes, saying, The Lord commanded Moses to give us an inheritance among our brethren. Therefore, according to the commandment of the Lord, he gave them an inheritance among the brethren of their father. And there fell ten portions to Manasseh, beside the land of Gilead and Bashan, which were on the other side Jordan, because the daughters of Manasseh had an inheritance among his sons, and the rest of Manasseh's sons had the land of Gilead. And the coast of Manasseh was from Asher to Michmatha, that lieth before Shechem, and the border went along the right hand unto the inhabitants of Entapua. Now Manasseh had the land of Tapua, but Tapua, on the border of Manasseh, belonged to the children of Ephraim. And the coast descended unto the river Cana, southward of the river. These cities of Ephraim are among the cities of Manasseh. The coast of Manasseh also was on the north side of the river, and the outgoings of it were at the sea. Southward it was Ephraim's, and northward it was Manasseh's, and the sea is his border. And they met together in Asher on the north, and in Issachar on the east. And Manasseh had in Issachar, and in Asher, Beth Shean, and her towns, and Ibliam, and her towns, and the inhabitants of Dor, and her towns, and the inhabitants of Endor, and her towns, and the inhabitants of Tanakh, and her towns, and the inhabitants of Megiddo, and her towns, even three countries. Yet the children of Manasseh could not drive out the inhabitants of those cities, but the Canaanites would dwell in that land. Yet it came to pass, when the children of Israel were waxen strong, that they put the Canaanites to tribute, but did not utterly drive them out. And the children of Joseph spake unto Joshua, saying, Why hast thou given me but one lot, and one portion to inherit, seeing I am a great people? for as much as the Lord hath blessed me hitherto. And Joshua answered them, If thou be a great people, then get thee up to the wood country, and cut down for thyself there in the land of the Perizzites, and of the giants, if Mount Ephraim be too narrow for thee. And the children of Joseph said, the hill is not enough for us, and all the Canaanites that dwell in the land of the valley have chariots of iron, both they who are our, uh, uh, um, both they who are of Beth Sheen and her towns, and they who are of the valley of Jezreel. And Joshua spake unto the house of Joseph, even to Ephraim and to Manasseh, saying, Thou art a great people, and thou hast great power. Thou shalt not have one lot only, but the mountain shall be thine, for it is a wood, and thou shalt cut it down, and the outgoings of it shall be thine, for thou shalt drive out the Canaanites, though they have iron chariots, and though they be strong. Chapter 18 And the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled together at Shiloh, and set up the tabernacle of the congregation there. And the land was subdued before them. 
and there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes, which had not yet received their inheritance. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, How long are ye slack to go to possess the land, which the Lord of your fathers hath given you? Give out from among you three men for each tribe, and I will send them, and they shall rise and go through the land, and describe it according to the inheritance of them. And they shall come again to me. And they shall divide it into seven parts. Judah shall abide in their coast on the south, and the house of Joseph shall abide in their coasts on the north. Ye shall therefore describe the land into seven parts, and bring the description hither to me, that I may cast lots for you here before the Lord our God. But the Levites have no part among you, for the priesthood of the Lord is their inheritance. And Gad and Reuben and the half-tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance beyond Jordan on the east, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave them. And the men arose and went away. And Joshua charged them that went to describe the land, saying, Go and walk through the land, and describe it, and come again to me, that I may here cast lots for you before the Lord in Shiloh. And the men went and passed through the land, and described it by cities into seven parts in a book, and came again to Joshua, to the host at Shiloh. And Joshua cast lots for them in Shiloh before the Lord. And there Joshua divided the land unto the children of Israel, according to their divisions. And the lot of the tribe of the children of Benjamin came up according to their families. And the coast of their lot came forth between the children of Judah and the children of Joseph. And their border on the north side was from Jordan, and the border went up to the side of Jericho on the north side, and went up through the mountains westward, and the goings out thereof were at the wilderness of Bethaven. And the border went over from thence toward Luz, to the side of Luz, which is Bethel, southward, and on the border descended to Atarothadar, near the hill, that lieth on the south side of the nether Bethhoron. And the border was drawn thence, and the border went over from thence toward Luz, to the side of Luz, which is Bethel, southward. And the border descended to Atarothadar, near the hill that lieth on the south side of the nether Bethoran. And the border was drawn thence, and compassed the corner of the sea southward, from the hill that lieth before Bethoran southward, and the goings out thereof were at Kirjath Bal, which is Kirjath Jerim, a city of the children of Judah. This was the west quarter. And the south quarter was from the end of kirjath Jerim, and the border went out on the west, and went out to the well of waters of Nephtoah. And the border came down to the end of the mountain that lieth before the valley of the son of Hinnom, and which is in the valley of the giants on the north, and descended to the valley of Hinnom, to the side of Jebusai on the south and descended to Enrogel, and was drawn from the north, and went forth to En Shemesh, and went forth towards Gililoth, which is over against the going up of Adumim, and descended to the stone of Bowen, the son of Reuben, and passed along toward the side over against Araba, northward, and went down unto Araba, and the border passed along to the side of Beth-Hogla, northward, 
and the outgoings of the border were at the north bay of the salt sea at the south end of jordan this was the south coast and jordan was the border of it on the east side this was the inheritance of the children of benjamin by the coasts thereof round about according to their families now the cities of the tribe of the children of benjamin according to their families were jericho and beth hogla and the valley of kezes and beth Araba, and Zemaraim, and Bethel, and Avim, and Pharah, and Ophrah, and Kephar Hanomai, and Ophni, and Geba, twelve cities with their villages, Gibeon, and Ramah, and Biroth, and Mizpeh, and Kephira, and Moza, and Rechem, and Erpiel, and Terelah and Zelaph, Eleph, and Jebusai, which is Jerusalem, Gibeath, and Kirjath, fourteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the children of Benjamin, according to their families. Chapter 19 And the second lot came forth to Simeon, even for the tribe of the children of Simeon, according to their families. And their inheritance was within the inheritance of the children of Judah. And they had in their inheritance Beersheba, and Sheba, and Molada, and Hezarshual, and Bela, and Azim, and el Talad, and Bethuel, and Horma, and Zyklag, and beth Markaboth and hazar Susa, and Bethlebaoth, and Sharuhen, thirteen cities and their villages, Ain, Remon, and Ether, and Ashan, four cities and their villages. And all the villages that were round about these cities to balath Ramoth of the south, this is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Simeon, according to their families. Out of the portion of the children of Judah was the inheritance of the children of Simeon, for the part of the children of Judah was too much for them. Therefore the children of Simeon had their inheritance within the inheritance of them. And the third lot came up for the children of Zebulun, according to their families, and the border of their inheritance was unto Sarid, and their border went up toward the sea, and Merilah, and reached to Dabasheth, and reached to the river that is before Jochnium, and turned from Sarid eastward toward the sun rising, unto the border of Chisloth Tabor, and then goeth out to Debarath, and goeth up to Japhia and from thence passeth on along on the east to Gitarhefer, and to Itacazin, and goeth out to Remamethoar, to Nea, and the border compasseth it on the north side to Hanathon, and the outgoings thereof are in the valley of Jephthahel, and Keta, and Nehalal, and Shimron, and Idala and Bethlehem, twelve cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the children of Zebulun, according to their families, these cities with their villages. And the fourth lot came out to Issachar, for the children of Issachar, according to their families. And their border was toward Jezreel and Chesaloth, and Shunem, and Hephraim, and Shihon, and Enaharath, and Arabeth, and Kashian, and Abaz, and Remeth, and Eganim, and Enhada, and beth Pazes, and the coast reacheth to Tabor, and Shehazima, and beth Shemesh, and the outgoings of their border were at Jordan, sixteen cities with their villages. 
This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Issachar, according to their families, the cities and their villages. And the fifth lot came out for the tribe of the children of Asher, according to their families, and their border was Helkath and Helai, Betin and Akshaf, and Alamelech and Amad and Mishiel, and reacheth to Carmel westward, and to Shihor Blidnath, and to Shihor Leibneth, and turneth toward the sun rising to Beth Dagon, and reacheth to Zebulun, and to the valley of Jephthahel, toward the north side of Bethemek, and Nael, and goeth out to Cabul on the left hand, and Hebron, and Rehob, and Haman, and Cana, even unto great Zidon. And then the coast turneth to Ramah, and to the strong city Tyre. And the coast turneth to Hosa, and the outgoings thereof are at the sea from the coast to Azib. Uma also, and Aphek, and Rehob, twenty and two cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Asher, according to their families, these cities with their villages. The sixth lot came out to the children of Naphtali, even for the children of Naphtali, according to their families. And their coast was from Heleph, from Elon to Zananim, and Adamai, Nikab, and Jebneel, unto Lakum, and the outgoings thereof were at Jordan. And then the coast turneth westward to Esnothtabor, and goeth out from thence to Hukok, and reacheth to Zebulun on the south side, and reacheth to Asher on the west side, and to Judah upon Jordan toward the sun rising. And the fenced cities are Zidim, Zer, and Hamath, Rakath, and Chinareth, and Adema, and Ramah, and Hazor, and Kadesh, and Idre, and Enhazor, and Iron, and Migdalel, Horem, and Bethanath, and Beth Shemesh. Nineteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Naphtali, according to their families, the cities and their villages. And the seventh lot came out for the tribe of the children of Dan, according to their families. And the coast of their inheritance was Zorah, and Eshtaol, and Ershemesh, and Shalabin, and Ajalon, and Jephla, and Elon, and Thimnaeth, and Ekron, and Eltik, and Gibbethon, and Balath, and Jehud, and Beneberak, and Gathrimon, and Mejarkon, and Rakon, with the border before Japho. And the coast of the children of Dan went out too little for them. And therefore the children of Dan went up to fight against Lashem, and took it, and smote it with the edge of the sword, and possessed it, and dwelt therein, and called Lashem Dan, after the name of Dan their father. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Dan, according to their families, these cities with their villages. When they had made an end of dividing the land for inheritance by their coasts, the children of Israel gave an inheritance to Joshua, the son of Nun, among them. According to the word of the Lord, they gave him the city, which he asked, even Timnathserah, in Mount Ephraim, and he built the city, and dwelt therein.
These are the inheritances, which Eleazar the priest, and Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel, divided for an inheritance by lot in Shiloh, before the Lord, at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So they made an end of dividing the country. Chapter 20 The Lord also spake unto Joshua, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, Appoint out for you cities of refuge, whereof I spake unto you by the hand of Moses, that the slayer that killeth any person unawares and unwittingly may flee thither, and they shall be your refuge from the avenger of blood. And when he that doth flee unto one of those cities shall stand at the entering of the gate of the city, and shall declare his cause in the ears of the elders of that city, they shall take him into the city unto them, and give him a place that he may dwell among them. And if the avenger of blood pursue after him, then they shall not deliver the slayer up into his hand, because he smote his neighbor unwittingly, and hated him not before time. And he shall dwell in that city until he stand before the congregation for judgment, and until the death of the high priest that shall be in those days. And until the death of the high priest that shall be in those days, then shall the slayer return, and come unto his own city, and unto his own house, unto the city from whence he fled. And they appointed, yeah. and they appointed Kadesh in Galilee, in Mount Naphtali, and Shechem in Mount Ephraim, and Kirjatharba, which is Hebron, in the mountain of Judah. And on the other side of Jordan by Jericho eastward, they assigned Bezer in the wilderness upon the plain out of the tribe of Reuben, and Ramoth in Gilead out of the tribe of Gad, and Golan in Bashan out of the tribe of Manasseh. These were the cities appointed for all the children of Israel, and for the stranger that sojourneth among them, that whosoever killeth any person at unawares might flee thither, and not die by the hand of the avenger of blood, until he stood before the congregation. Chapter 21 Then came near the heads of the fathers of the Levites, unto Eliezer the priest, and unto Joshua the son of Nun, and unto the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel. And they spake unto them at Shiloh, in the land of Canaan, saying, The Lord commanded by the hand of Moses to give us cities to dwell in, with the suburbs thereof for our cattle. And the children of Israel gave unto the Levites out of their inheritance, at the commandment of the Lord, these cities and their suburbs. And... The lot came out for the families of the Kohathites, and the children of Aaron the priest, which were of the Levites, had by lot out of the tribe of Judah, and out of the tribe of Simeon, and out of the tribe of Benjamin, thirteen cities. And the rest of the children of Kohath had by lot out of the families of the tribe of Ephraim, and out of the tribe of Dan, and out of the half-tribe of Manasseh, ten cities. And the children of Gershon had, by lot, out of the families of the tribe of Issachar, and out of the tribe of Asher, and out of the tribe of Naphtali, and out of the half-tribe of Manasseh, in Bashan, thirteen cities. The children of Merari, by their families, had, out of the tribe of Reuben, and out of the tribe of Gad, and out of the tribe of Zebulun, twelve cities. And the children of Israel gave, by lot, unto the Levites, these cities, with their suburbs, as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. 
and they gave out of the tribe of the children of judah and out of the tribe of the children of simeon these cities which are here mentioned by name which the children of aaron being of the families of the kohathites who were the children of levi had for theirs was the first lot and they gave them the city of arba the father of anak which city is hebron in the hill country of judah with the suburbs thereof round about it but the fields of the city and the villages thereof gave they to caleb the son of jephunneh for his possession thus they gave to the children of aaron the priest hebron with her suburbs to be a city of refuge for the slayer and libna with her suburbs and jatir with her suburbs and eshtemoa with her suburbs and holon with her suburbs and debir with her suburbs and ayan with her suburbs and Judah with her suburbs and beth shemesh with her suburbs nine cities out of those two tribes and out of the tribe of benjamin gibeon with her suburbs geba with her suburbs anathoth with her suburbs and almon with her suburbs four cities all the cities of the children of aaron the priests were thirteen cities with their suburbs and the families of the children of kohath the levites which remained of the children of kohath even they had the cities of their lot out of the tribe of ephraim for they gave them shechem with her suburbs in mount ephraim to be a city of refuge for the slayer and geezer with her suburbs and kibzaim with her suburbs and beth horon with her suburbs four cities and out of the tribe of dan Altica with her suburbs Gibbethon with her suburbs Ajalon with her suburbs Gathrimon with her suburbs four cities and out of the half tribe of Manasseh Tanak with her suburbs and Gathrimon with her suburbs two cities all the cities were ten with their suburbs for the family of the children of Kohath that remained and unto the children of gershon of the families of the levites out of the other half tribe of manasseh they gave golon in bashan with her suburbs to be a city of refuge for the slayer and beestra with her suburbs two cities and out of the tribe of issachar kishon with her suburbs deborah with her suburbs jarmuth with her suburbs and Ganim with her suburbs four cities and out of the tribe of asher mishal with her suburbs abdon with her suburbs helkath with her suburbs and rahab with her suburbs four cities and out of the tribe of naphtali kadesh in galilee with her suburbs to be a city of refuge for the slayer and hamothadar with her suburbs and Kartan with her suburbs, three cities. All the cities of the Gershonites, according to their families, were thirteen cities with their suburbs. And unto the families of the children of Merari, the rest of the Levites, out of the tribe of Zebulun, Jachneum with her suburbs, and Karta with her suburbs, Dimna with her suburbs, Nahalel with her suburbs, four cities. And out of the tribe of Reuben, Bezer with her suburbs, and out of the tribe of Reuben, Bezir with her suburbs, and Jehaza with her suburbs, Kidimoth with her suburbs, and Mebtath in and Mebtath with her suburbs, four cities. And out of the tribe of Gad, Ramoth in Gilead with her suburbs, to be a city of refuge for the slayer, and Mahanaim with her suburbs, Heshbon with her suburbs, Jazer with her suburbs, four cities in all. 
so all the cities for the children of merari by their families which were remaining of the families of the levites were by lot twelve cities all the cities of the levites within the possession of the children of israel were forty and eight with their suburbs these cities were every one with their suburbs round about them thus were all these cities and the lord gave unto israel all the land which he sware to give unto their fathers and they possessed it and dwelt therein and the lord gave them rest round about according to all that he sware unto their fathers and there stood not a man of all their enemies before them the lord delivered all their enemies into their hand there failed not aught of any good thing which the lord had spoken unto the house of israel all came to pass End of section 21section twenty two of the holy bible the king james version joshua chapters twenty two to twenty four this librivox recording is in the public domain your reader michael armenta chapter twenty two then joshua called the reubenites and the gadites and the half tribe of manasseh and said unto them ye have kept all that moses the servant of the lord commanded you and have obeyed my voice in all that i commanded you ye have not left your brethren these many days unto this day but have kept the charge of the commandments of the lord your god and now the lord your god hath given rest unto your brethren as he promised them therefore now return ye and get you unto your tents and unto the land of your possession which moses the servant of the lord gave you on the other side jordan but take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law which moses the servant of the lord charged you to love the lord your god and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul so joshua blessed them and sent them away and they went unto their tents now to the one half of the tribe of manasseh moses had given possession in bashan but unto the other half thereof gave joshua among their brethren on this side jordan westward and when joshua sent them away also unto their tents then he blessed them and he spake unto them saying return with much riches unto your tents and with very much cattle with silver and with gold and with brass and with iron and with very much raiment divide the spoil of your enemies with your brethren and the children of reuben and the children of gad and the half tribe of manasseh returned and departed from the children of israel out of shiloh which is in the land of canaan to go unto the country of gilead to the land of their possession whereof they were possessed according to the word of the lord by the hand of moses and when they came unto the borders of jordan that are in the land of canaan the children of reuben and the children of gad and the half tribe of manasseh built there an altar by jordan a great altar to see to and the children of israel heard say behold the children of reuben and the children of gad and the half tribe of manasseh have built an altar over against the land of canaan in the borders of jordan 
at the passage of the children of Israel. And when the children of Israel heard of it, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered themselves together at Shiloh to go up to war against them. And the children of Israel sent unto the children of Reuben, and to the children of Gad, and to the half-tribe of Manasseh, into the land of Gilead. And the children of Israel sent unto the children of Reuben, and to the children of Gad, and to the half-tribe of Manasseh, into the land of Gilead, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, and with him ten princes, of each chief house a prince, throughout all the tribes of Israel. And each one was an head of the house of their fathers, among the thousands of Israel. And they came unto the children of Reuben, and to the children of Gad, and to the half-tribe of Manasseh, unto the land of Gilead. And they spake with them, saying, Thus saith the whole congregation of the Lord, What trespass is this that ye have committed against the God of Israel, to turn away this day from following the Lord, in that ye have builded you an altar, that ye might rebel this day against the Lord? Is the iniquity of Peor too little for us, from which we are not cleansed until this day? although there was a plague in the congregation of the Lord. But that ye must turn away this day from following the Lord? And it will be, seeing that ye rebel to-day against the Lord, that to-morrow he will be wroth with the whole congregation of Israel. Notwithstanding, if the land of your possession be unclean, then... Pass ye over unto the land of the possession of the Lord, wherein the Lord's tabernacle dwelleth, and take possession among us. But rebel not against the Lord, nor rebel against us in building you an altar beside the altar of the Lord our God. Did not Achan, the son of Zerah, commit a trespass in the accursed thing, and wrath fell on all the congregation of Israel? And that man perished not alone in his iniquity. Then the children of Reuben, and the children of Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, answered, and said unto the heads of the thousands of Israel, The Lord God of gods, the Lord God of gods, he knoweth, and Israel he shall know, if it be in rebellion, or if in transgression against the Lord, save us not this day, that we have built us an altar to turn from following the Lord, or if to offer thereon burnt offering, or meat offering, or to offer peace offerings thereon. Let the Lord himself require it. And if we have not rather done it for fear of this thing, saying, in time to come your children might speak unto our children, saying, What have ye to do with the Lord God of Israel? For the Lord hath made Jordan a border between us and you, ye children of Reuben, and children of Gad. Ye have no part in the Lord. So shall your children make our children cease from fearing the Lord. Therefore, we said, let us now prepare to build us an altar, not for burnt offering, nor for sacrifice, but that it may be a witness between us and you, and our generations after us, that we might do the service of the Lord before him with our burnt offerings, and with our sacrifices, and with our peace offerings, that your children may not say to our children in time to come, Ye have no part in the Lord. Therefore said we, That it shall be, when they should so say to us, or to our generations in time to come, that we may say again, Behold the pattern of the altar of the Lord, which our fathers made, not for burnt offerings, nor for sacrifices, but it is a witness between us and you. 
god forbid that we should rebel against the lord and turn this day from following the lord to build an altar for burnt offerings for meat offerings or for sacrifices beside the altar of the lord our god and when phinehas the priest and the princes of the congregation and heads of the thousands of israel which were with him heard the words that the children of reuben and the children of gad and the children of manasseh spake it pleased them and phinehas the son of eleazar the priest said unto the children of reuben and to the children of gad and to the children of manasseh this day we perceive that the lord is among us because ye have not committed this trespass against the lord now ye have delivered the children of israel out of the hand of the lord and phinehas the son of eleazar the priest and the princes returned from the children of reuben and from the children of gad out of the land of gilead unto the land of canaan to the children of israel and brought them word again and the thing pleased the children of israel and the children of israel blessed god and did not intend to go up against them in battle to destroy the land wherein the children of reuben and gad dwelt and the children of reuben and the children of gad called the altar Eid, for it shall be a witness between us that the lord is god chapter twenty three and it came to pass a long time after that the lord hath given rest unto israel from all their enemies round about that joshua waxed old and stricken in age and joshua called for all israel and for their elders and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers and said unto them i am old and stricken in age and ye have seen all that the lord your god hath done unto all these nations because of you for the lord your god is he that hath fought for you behold i have divided unto you by lot these nations that remain to be an inheritance for your tribes from jordan with all the nations that i have cut off even unto the great sea westward and the lord your god he shall expel them before you and drive them from out of your sight and ye shall possess their land as the lord your god hath promised unto you be ye therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of moses that ye turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left that ye come not among these nations that remain among you neither make mention of the name of their gods nor cause to swear by them neither serve them nor bow yourselves unto them but cleave unto the lord your god as ye have done unto this day for the lord hath driven out from before you great nations and strong but as for you no man hath been able to stand before you unto this day if one man of you shall chase a thousand for the lord your god he it is that fighteth for you one man of you shall chase a thousand for the lord your god he it is that fighteth for you as he hath promised you take good heed therefore unto yourselves that ye love the lord your god else if ye do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations even these that remain among you and shall make marriages with them and go in unto them and they to you know for a certainty that the lord your god will no more drive out any of these nations from before you but they shall be snares and traps unto you 
and scourges in your sides, and thorns in your eyes, until ye perish from off this good land, which the Lord your God hath given you. And, behold, this day I am going the way of all the earth. And ye know in all your hearts, and in all your souls, that not one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you. All are come to pass unto you, and not one thing hath failed thereof. Therefore it shall come to pass, that as all good things are come upon you, which the Lord your God promised you, so shall the Lord bring upon you all evil things, until he have destroyed you from off this good land, which the Lord your God hath given you. When ye have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and have gone and served other gods, and bowed yourselves to them, then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and ye shall perish quickly from off the good land which he hath given unto you. Chapter 24 And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and called for the elders of Israel, and for their heads, and for their judges, and for their officers, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacor, and they served other gods. And I took your father, Abraham, from the other side of the flood, and led him throughout all the land of Canaan, and multiplied his seed, and gave him Isaac. And I gave unto Isaac Jacob and Esau, and I gave unto Esau Mount Seir to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt, I sent Moses also, and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt, according to that which I did among them. And afterward I brought you out, and I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and ye came unto the sea, and the Egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and horsemen, unto the Red Sea. And when they cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, and brought the sea upon them, and covered them. And your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt. And ye dwelt in the wilderness a long season. And I brought you into the hand. And I brought you into the land of the Amorites, which dwelt on the other side, Jordan. And they fought with you, and I gave them into your hand, that ye might possess their land, and I destroyed them from among you. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose and warred against Israel, and sent and called Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not hearken unto Balaam. Therefore he blessed you still, so I delivered you out of his hand. And when you went over Jordan, and came unto Jericho, and the men of Jericho fought against you, the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Girgashites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I delivered them into your hand, and I sent the hornet before you, and drave them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword, nor with thy bow. And I have given you a land for which ye did not labor, and cities which ye built not, and ye dwell in them, of the vineyards and olive yards which ye planted, not do ye eat. Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. 
and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up, and our fathers out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, and which did those great signs in our sight, and preserved us in all the way wherein we went, and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drave out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. Therefore will we also serve the Lord, for he is our God. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye cannot serve the Lord, for he is an holy God, he is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgression, nor your sins. If ye forsake the Lord, and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt, and consume you, after that he hath done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourselves, that ye have chosen you the Lord, to serve him? And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God will we serve, and his voice will we obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and set them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God, and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said unto all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us, for it hath heard all the words of the Lord which he spake unto us. It shall be therefore a witness unto you, lest ye deny your God. So Joshua let the people depart, every man unto his inheritance. And it came to pass after these things that Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being an hundred and ten years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance at timnath Sarah, which is in Mount Ephraim on the north side of the hill of Gash. And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders that overlived Joshua, and which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. And the bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel brought up out of Egypt, buried they in Shechem in a parcel of ground which Jacob bought of the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for an hundred pieces of silver. And it became the inheritance of the children of Joseph. And Eliezer, the son of Aaron, died, and they buried him in a hill that pertained to Phinehas his son, which was given him in Mount Ephraim. End of section 22.
Section 23 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version. Judges, Chapters 1 through 8. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Your reader, Michael Armenta. Chapter 1. Now after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. And Judah said unto Simeon his brother, Come up with me into my lot, that we may fight against the Canaanites, and I likewise will go with thee into thy lot. So Simeon went with him. And Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand. And they slew of them in Bezek ten thousand men. And they found Adonai Bezek in Bezek. And they fought against him, and they slew the Canaanites and the Perizzites. But Adonai Bezek fled, and they pursued after him, and caught him, and cut off his thumbs and his great toes. And Adonai Bezek said, Threescore and ten kings, having their thumbs and their great toes cut off, gathered their meat under my table. As I have done, so God hath requited me. And they brought him to Jerusalem, and there he died. Now the children of Judah had fought against Jerusalem, and had taken it, and smitten it with the edge of the sword, and set the city on fire. And afterward the children of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites that dwelt in the mountain, and in the south, and in the valley. And Judah went against the Canaanites that dwelt in Hebron. Now the name of Hebron before was Kirjatharba. And they slew Shishai, and Ahiman, and Talmai. And from thence he went against the inhabitants of Debir, and the name of Debir before was kirjath Sefer. And Caleb said, He that smiteth kirjath Sefer, and taken it, to him will I give Aksa, my daughter, to wife. And Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, took it, and he gave him Aksa, his daughter, to wife. And it came to pass, when she came to him, that she moved him to ask her father a field. And she lighted from off her ass, and Caleb said unto her, What wilt thou? And she said unto him, Give me a blessing, for thou hast given me a south land. Give me also springs of water. And Caleb gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. And the children of the Kenite, Moses' father-in-law, went up out of the city of palm-trees with the children of Judah into the wilderness of Judah, which lieth in the south of Arad. And they went and dwelt among the people. And Judah went with Simeon his brother, and they slew the Canaanites that inhabited Zephath, and utterly destroyed it. And the name of the city was called Hormah. Also Judah took Gaza with the coast thereof, and Askelon with the coast thereof, and Ekron with the coast thereof. And the Lord was with Judah, and he drave out the inhabitants of the mountain, but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley, because they had chariots of iron. And they gave Hebron unto Caleb, as Moses said. And he expelled thence the three sons of Anak. And the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites that inhabited Jerusalem, but the Jebusites dwell with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem unto this day. And the house of Joseph, they also went up against Bethel, and the Lord was with them, and the house of Joseph sent to describe Bethel. Now the name of the city before was Luz. And the spies saw a man come forth out of the city, 
and they said unto him, Shew us, we pray thee, the entrance into the city, and we will show thee mercy. And when he shewed them the entrance into the city, they smote the city with the edge of the sword. But they let go the man and all his family. And the man went into the land of the Hittites, and built a city, and called the name thereof Luz, which is the name thereof unto this day. Neither did Manasseh drive out the inhabitants of Beth Sheen and her towns, nor Tanak and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Dor and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Iblium and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Megiddo and her towns. But the Canaanites would dwell in that land. And it came to pass, when Israel was strong, that they put the Canaanites to tribute, and did not utterly drive them out. Neither did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites that dwell in Gezer, but the Canaanites dwelt in Gezer among them. Neither did Zebulun drive out the inhabitants of Chitron, nor the inhabitants of Nahalol, but the Canaanites dwelt among them, and became tributaries. Neither did Asher drive out the inhabitants of Acho, nor the inhabitants of Zidon, nor of Alab, nor of Axib, nor of Helba, nor of Aphic, nor of Rehob. But the Asherites dwelt among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land, for they did not drive them out. Neither did Naphtali drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh, nor the inhabitants of Bethanath, but he dwelt among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land. Nevertheless, the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh and of Bethanath became tributaries unto them. And the Amorites forced the children of Dan into the mountain, for they would not suffer them to come down to the valley. But the Amorites would dwell in Mount Heres, in Ajalon, and in Shalbim. Yet the hand of the house of Joseph prevailed, so that they became tributaries. And the coast of the Amorites was from the going up to Akrabim, from the rock and upward. Chapter 2 and an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim, and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt, and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you, and ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars. But ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their gods shall be a snare unto you. And it came to pass, when the angel of the Lord spake these words unto all the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and wept. And they called the name of that place Bochim and they sacrificed there unto the Lord. And when Joshua had let the people go, the children of Israel went, every man, unto his inheritance to possess the land. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being an hundred and ten years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnatheres, in the mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill Geash. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and served Balaam. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods, of the gods of the people that were round about them, and bowed themselves unto them, 
and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord, and served Baal and Ashtaroth. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about, so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. Whithersoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a-whoring after other gods, and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not so. And when the Lord raised them up as judges, then the Lord was with the judge, and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord, because of their groanings, by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. And it came to pass, when the judge was dead, that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. They ceased not from their own doings, nor from their stubborn way. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he said, Because that this people hath transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and have not hearkened unto my voice, I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died, that through them I may prove Israel, whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein, as their fathers did keep it, or not. Therefore the Lord left those nations, without driving them out hastily, neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. Chapter 3 Now these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them, even as many of Israel had not known all the wars of Canaan, only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war, at the least, such as before, knew nothing thereof. Namely, five lords of the Philistines, and all the Canaanites, and the Sidonians, and the Hivites, that dwelt in Mount Lebanon, from Mount Baal-Hermon, unto the entering in of Hamath. And they were to prove Israel by them, to know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of the Lord, which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, the Hittites, and Amorites, and Perizzites, and Hivites, and Jebusites. And they took their daughters to be their wives, and gave their daughters to their sons, and served their gods. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and forgat the Lord their God, and served Balaam and the groves. Therefore the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of Chushanrithashem, king of Mesopotamia, and the children of Israel served Chushanrithashem eight years. And when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel, who delivered them, even Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel, and went out to war. And the Lord delivered Chushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand, and his hand prevailed against Chushan Rishathaim. 
and the land had rest forty years and othniel the son of kines died and the children of israel did evil again in the sight of the lord and the lord strengthened eglon the king of moab against israel because they had done evil in the sight of the lord and he gathered unto him the children of ammon and amalek and went and smote israel and possessed the city of palm trees so the children of israel served eglon the king of moab eighteen years but when the children of israel cried unto the lord the lord raised them up a deliverer ehud the son of gera a benjamite a man left-handed and by him the children of israel sent a present unto eglon the king of moab but ehud made him a dagger which had two edges of a cubit length and he did gird it under his raiment upon his right thigh and he brought the present unto eglon king of moab and eglon was a very fat man and when he had made an end to offer the present he sent away the people that bear the present but he himself turned again from the quarries that were by gilgal and said i have a secret errand unto thee o king who said keep silence and all that stood by him went out from him and ehud came unto him as he was sitting in a summer parlour which he had for himself alone and ehud said i have a message from god unto thee and he arose out of his seat and ehud put forth his left hand and took the dagger from his right thigh and thrust it into his belly and the haft also went in after the blade and the fat closed upon the blade so that he could not draw the dagger out of his belly and the dirt came out then ehud went forth through the porch and shut the doors of the parlour upon him and locked them when he was gone out his servants came and when they saw that behold the doors of the parlour were locked they said surely he covereth his feet in his summer chamber and they tarried till they were ashamed and behold he opened not the doors of the parlour therefore they took a key and opened them and behold their lord was fallen down dead on the earth and ehud escaped while they tarried and passed beyond the quarries and escaped unto serath and it came to pass when he was come that he blew a trumpet in the mountain of ephraim and the children of israel went down with him from the mount and he before them and he said unto them follow after me for the lord hath delivered your enemies the moabites into your hand and they went down after him and took the fords of jordan toward moab and suffered not a man to pass over and they slew of moab at that time about ten thousand men all lusty and all men of valour and there escaped not a man so moab was subdued that day under the hand of israel and the land had rest for score years and after him was shamgar the son of anath which slew of the philistines six hundred men with an ox goad and he also delivered israel chapter four and the children of israel again did evil in the sight of the lord when ehud was dead and the lord sold them into the hand of jabin king of canaan that reigned in hazor the captain of whose host was sisera 
which dwelt in Herosheth of the Gentiles. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had nine hundred chariots of iron, and twenty years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lepidoth, she judged Israel at that time. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel, in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinoam, out of Kadesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali, and of the children of Zebulun? And I will draw unto thee to the river Kishon, Sisera, the captains of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him into thine hand. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go, but if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honour, for the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kedesh. And Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali to Kedesh, and he went up with ten thousand men at his feet, and Deborah went up with him. Now Heber the Kenite, which was of the children of Hobeb, the father-in-law of Moses, had severed himself from the Kenites, and pitched his tent unto the plains of Zenaim, which is by Kedesh, and they shewed Sisera that Barak the son of Abinoam was gone up to Mount Tabor, and Sisera gathered together all his chariots, even nine hundred chariots of iron, and all the people that were with him, from Herosheth of the Gentiles unto the river of Kishon. And Deborah said unto Barak, Up, for this is the day in which the Lord hath delivered Sisera into thine hand. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor, and ten thousand men after him. And the Lord discomfited Sisera, and all his chariots, and all his host, with the edge of the sword before Barak, so that Sisera lighted down off his chariot, and fled away on his feet. But Barak pursued after the chariots, and after the host, unto Herosheth of the Gentiles. And all the host of Sisera fell upon the edge of the sword, and there was not a man left. Howbeit, Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, for there was peace between Jabin the king of Hazor and the house of Heber the Kenite. And Jael went out to meet Sisera, and said unto him, Turn in, my lord, turn in to me, fear not. And when he had turned in unto her, into the tent, she covered him with a mantle, and he said unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. And she opened a bottle of milk, and gave him drink, and covered him. And he said unto her, Stand in the door of the tent, and it shall be, when any man doth come and inquire of thee, and say, Is there any man here, that thou shalt say no? Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a nail of the tent, and took an hammer in her hand 
and went softly unto him, and smote the nail into his temples, and fastened it into the ground, for he was fast asleep and weary. So he died. And, behold, as Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him, and said unto him, Come, and I will shew thee the man whom thou seekest. And when he came into her tent, behold, Sisera lay dead, and the nail was in his temples. So God subdued on that day Jabin the king of Canaan before the children of Israel. And the hand of the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against Jabin the king of Canaan, until they had destroyed Jabin king of Canaan. Chapter 5 Then sang Deborah and Barak the son of Abinoam on that day, saying, Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel, when the people willingly offered themselves. Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes. I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. Lord, when thou wentest out of Seir, when thou marchedst out of the field of Edom, the earth trembled, and the heavens dropped, the clouds also dropped water. The mountains melted from before the Lord, even that Sinai from before the Lord God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were unoccupied, and the travellers walked through byways. The inhabitants of the villages ceased, they ceased in Israel, until that I, Deborah, arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. They chose new gods. Then was war in the gates. Was there a shield or spear seen among forty thousand in Israel? My heart is toward the governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the Lord. Speak ye that ride on white asses, ye that sit in judgment, and walk by the way. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. Awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, utter a song. Arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive, thou son of Abinoam. Then he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. Out of Ephraim was there a root of them against Amalek. After thee, Benjamin, among thy people, out of Machir came down governors, and out of Zebulun they that handle the pen of the writer. And the princes of Issachar were with Deborah, even Issachar, and also Barak. He was sent on foot into the valley. For the divisions of Reuben there were great thoughts of heart. Why abodest thou among the sheepfolds, to hear the bleatings of the flocks? For the divisions of Reuben... There were great searchings of heart. Gilead abode beyond Jordan, and why did Dan remain in ships? Asher continued on the seashore, and abode in his breaches. Zebulun and Naphtali were a people that jeoparded their lives unto the death in the high places of the field. The kings came and fought, then fought the kings of Canaan and Tanak by the waters of Megiddo. They took no gain of money. They fought from heaven. The stars in their courses fought against Sisera. The river of Kishon swept them away, that ancient river, the river Kishon. O oh, my soul, thou hast trodden down strength. Then were the horse hoofs broken by the means of the prancings, the prancings of their mighty ones. Curse ye, Meroz, said the angel of the Lord. 
curse ye bitterly the inhabitants thereof, because they came not to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. Blessed above women shall Jael, the son of Heber, the Kenite, be. Blessed shall she be above women in the tent. He asked water, and she gave him milk. She brought forth butter in a lordly dish. She put her hand to the nail, and her right hand to the workman's hammer. And with the hammer she smote Sisera. She smote off his head when she had pierced and stricken him through his temples. At her feet he bowed, he fell, he lay down. At her feet he bowed, he fell. Where he bowed, there he fell down dead. The mother of Sisera looked out at a window and cried through the lattice, Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the wheels of his chariots? Her wise ladies answered her, yea. She returned answer to herself. Have they not sped? Have they not divided the prey? To every man a damsel or two? To Sisera a prey of diverse colours? A prey of diverse colours of needlework? Or diverse colours of needlework on both sides? Meet for the necks of them that take the spoil? So let all thine enemies perish, O Lord, but let them that love him be as the sun when he goeth forth in his might. And the land had rest forty years. Chapter 6 And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, that because of the Midianites the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains, and caves, and strongholds. And so it was, when Israel had sown, that the Midianites came up, and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. And they encamped against them, and destroyed the increase of the earth, till thou come unto Gaza, and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers, or multitude, for both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass, when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt, and brought you forth out of the house of bondage, and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all that oppressed you, and drave them out from before you, and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God, Fear not the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. And there came an angel of the Lord, and sat under an oak which was in Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash the Abirzite. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress, to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valour. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? 
but now the Lord hath forsaken us, and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him, and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then shew me a sign that thou talkest with me. Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee, and bring forth my present, and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. And Gideon went in, and made ready a kid, and unleavened cakes of an ephah of flour. The flesh he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot, and brought it out unto him under the oak, and presented it. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cakes, and lay them upon this rock, and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand, and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes, and there rose up fire out from the rock, and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. Then, Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord, and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day it is yet in Ophrah of the Abirzites. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father hath, and cut down the grove that is by it, and build an altar unto the Lord of thy God upon the top of this rock, in the ordered place, and take the second bullock, and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove which thou shalt cut down. Then Gideon took ten men of his servants, and did as the Lord had said unto him. And so it was, because he feared his father's household, and the men of the city, that he could not do it by day, that he did it by night. And when the men of that city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cast down, and the grove was cut down that was by it, and the second bullock was offered upon the altar that was built. And they said to one another, Who hath done this thing? And when they inquired and asked, they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, hath done this thing. Then, when the men of city said unto Joash, Bring out thy son, that he may die, because he hath cast down the altar of Baal, and because he hath cut down the grove that was by it. And Joash said unto all that stood against him, Will ye plead for Baal? Will ye save him? He that will plead for him, let him be put to death while it is yet morning. If he be a god, let him plead for himself, because one hath cast down his altar. Therefore, on that day, he called him Jerub Baal, saying, Let Baal plead against him, because he hath thrown down his altar. Then all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east were gathered together, 
and went over and pitched in the valley of Jezreel. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, and Abiezer was gathered after him, and he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, who also was gathered after him, and he sent messengers unto Asher, and unto Zebulun, and unto Naphtali, and they came up to meet them. And Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said, Behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor, and if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said. And it was so. For he rose up early on the morrow, and thrust the fleece together, and wringed the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. And Gideon said unto God, Let not thine anger be hot against me, and I will speak but this once. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry only upon the fleece, and upon all the ground let there be dew. And God did so that night, for it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. Chapter 7 Then Jerubbabel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early, and pitched beside the well of Harod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them, by the hill of Moray in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return, and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there, and it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, This shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people unto the water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, and let all the other people go every man unto his place. So the people took victuals in their hands, and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of Israel, every man unto his tent, and retained those three hundred men. And the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. And it came to pass the same night, that the Lord said unto him, Arise! Get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it into thine hand. But if thou fear to go down, go thou with Fura, thy servant, down to the host. And thou shalt hear what they say, and afterward shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then he went down with Fura, his servant, unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. And the Midianites, and the Amalekites, and all the children of the east, lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude. And their camels were without number, as the sand by the seaside for multitude. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow, and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, 
and lo a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of midian and came unto a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it that the tent lay along and his fellow answered and said this is nothing else save the sword of gideon the son of joash a man of israel for into his hand hath god delivered midian and all the host and it was so when gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshipped and returned into the host of israel and said arise for the lord hath delivered into your hand the host of midian and he divided the three hundred men into three companies and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers and he said unto them look on me and do likewise and behold when i come to the outside of the camp it shall be that as i do so shall ye do when i blow with a trumpet i and all that are with me then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp and say the sword of the lord and of gideon so gideon and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch and they had but newly set the watch and they blew the trumpets and brake the pitchers that were in their hands and the three companies blew the trumpets and brake the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow withal and they cried the sword of the lord and of gideon and they stood every man in his place round about the camp and all the host ran and cried and fled and the three hundred men blew the trumpets and the lord set every man's sword against his fellow even throughout all the host and the host fled to bethshitta in zerarath and to the border of abel meholah unto tabath and all the men of israel gathered themselves together out of naphtali and out of asher and out of all manasseh and pursued after the midianites and gideon sent messengers throughout all mount ephraim saying come down against the midianites and take before them the waters unto bethbara and jordan then all the men of ephraim gathered themselves together and took the waters unto bethbara and jordan and they took two princes of the midianites oreb and zeb and they slew oreb upon the rock oreb and zeb they slew at the winepress of zeb and pursued midian and brought the heads of oreb and zeb to gideon on the other side jordan chapter eight and the men of ephraim said unto him why hast thou served us thus that thou calledst us not when thou wentest to fight with the midianites and they did chide with him sharply and he said unto them what have i done now in comparison of you is not the gleaning of the grapes of ephraim better than the vintage of abiezer god hath delivered into your hands the princes of midian oreb and zeb and what was i able to do in comparison of you then their anger was abated toward him when he had said that and gideon came to jordan and passed over he and the three hundred men that were with him faint yet pursuing them and he said unto the men of succoth give i pray you loaves of bread unto the people that follow me for they be faint and i am pursuing after zeba and zalmunna kings of midian and the princess of succoth said are the hands of zeba and zalmunna now in thine hand that we should give bread unto thine army and gideon said 
therefore when the lord hath delivered ziba and zalmunna into mine hand then i will tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with briars and he went up thence to penuel and spake unto them likewise and the men of penuel answered him as the men of succoth had answered him and he spake also unto the men of penuel saying when i come again in peace i will break down this tower now ziba and zalmunna were in karkor and their hosts with them about fifteen thousand men all that were left of all the hosts of the children of the east for there fell an hundred and twenty thousand men that drew sword and gideon went up by the way of them that dwelt in tents on the east of noba and jagbeha and smote the host for the host was secure and when zeba and zamuna fled he pursued after them and took the two kings of midian zeba and zalmunna and discomfited all the host and gideon the son of joash returned from battle before the sun was up and caught a young man of the men of succoth and inquired of him and he described unto him the princes of succoth and the elders thereof even threescore and seventeen men and he came unto the men of succoth and said behold ziba and zalmunna with whom ye did upbraid me saying are the hands of ziba and zalmunna now in thine hand that we should give bread unto thy men that are weary and he took the elders of the city and the thorns of the wilderness and briars and with them he taught the men of succoth and he beat down the tower of penuel and slew the men of the city then said he unto zeba and zalmunna what manner of men were they whom ye slew at tabor and they answered as thou art so were they each one resembling the children of a king and he said they were my brethren even the sons of thy mother as the lord liveth if ye had saved them alive i would not slay you and he said unto jether his firstborn up and slay them but the youth drew not his sword, for he feared, because he was yet a youth. Then Ziba and Zalmunna said, Rise thou, and fall upon us, for as the man is, so is his strength. And Gideon arose, and slew Zilba and Zalmunna, and took away the ornaments that were on their camels' necks. Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, both thou and thy sons, and thy son's son also, for thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. And Gideon said unto them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. And Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you, that ye would give me every man the earnings of his prey. For they had golden earrings, because they were Ishmaelites. And they answered him, We will willingly give them. And they spread a garment, and it cast therein every man the earrings of his prey. And the weight of the golden earrings that he requested was a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold, beside ornaments and collars and purple raiment that was on the kings of Midian, and beside the chains that were about their camels' necks. And Gideon made an ephod thereof, and put it in his city, even in Ophrah, 
and all Israel went thither a whoring after it, which thing became a snare unto Gideon and to his house. Thus was Midian subdued before the children of Israel, so that they lifted up their heads no more, and the country was in quietness forty years in the days of Gideon. And Jerubbabel the son of Joash went, and dwelt in his own house, and Gideon had threescore and ten sons of his body begotten, for he had many wives. And his concubine, that was in Shechem, she also bare him a son, whose name he called Abimelech. And Gideon the son of Joash died in a good old age, and was buried in the sepulchre of Joash his father, in Ophrah of the Abiezrites. And it came to pass, as soon as Gideon was dead, that the children of Israel turned again, and went a-whoring after Balaam, and made Baalbareth their god. And the children of Israel remembered not the Lord their God, who had delivered them out of the hands of all their enemies on every side. Neither shewed the kindness to the house of Jerubbabel, namely Gideon, according to all the goodness which he had shewed unto Israel. End of section 23「Section 24 of the Holy Bible, the King James Version, Judges, Chapters 9 through 18. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Your reader, Michael Armenta. Chapter 9 And Abimelech the son of Jerubbabel went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren, and communed with them and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether it is better for you, either that all the sons of Jerubbabel, which are threescore and ten persons, reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh, and his mother's brethren spake of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem, all these words, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. And they gave him threescore and ten pieces of silver out of the house of baal Bareth, wherewith Abimelech hired vain and light persons, which followed him. And he went unto his father's house at Ophrah, and slew his brethren, the sons of Jerubbabel, being threescore and ten persons, upon one stone. Notwithstanding yet, Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubbabel, was left, for he hid himself. And all the men of Shechem gathered together, and all the house of Milo, and went and made Abimelech king by the plain of the pillar that was in Shechem. And when they told it to Jotham, he went and stood in the top of Mount Gerzim, and lifted up his voice, and cried and said unto them, Hearken unto me, ye men of Shechem, that God may hearken unto you. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them, and they said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness, wherewith by me they honour God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? And the trees said to the fig tree, Come thou, and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit, and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man, 
and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said all the trees unto the bramble, Come thou, and reign over us. And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow, and if not, let fire come out of the bramble, and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now, therefore, if ye have done truly and sincerely, in that ye have made Abimelech king, and if ye have dealt well with Jerubbabel and his house, and have done unto him according to the deserving of his hands, for my father fought for you, and adventured his life far, and delivered you out of the hand of Midian, and ye are risen up against my father's house this day, and have slain his sons, threescore and ten persons, upon one stone, and have made Abimelech, the son of his maidservant, king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. If then ye have dealt truly and sincerely with Jerubbabel and with his house this day, then rejoice ye in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech, and devour the men of Shechem, and the house of Milo, and let fire come out from the men of Shechem, and from the house of Milo, and devour Abimelech. And Jotham ran away, and fled, and went to Beir, and dwelt there, for fear of Abimelech and his brother. When Abimelech had reigned three years over Israel, then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. And the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech, that the cruelty done to the threescore and ten sons of Jerubbabel might come, and their blood be laid upon Abimelech, their brother, which slew them, and upon the men of Shechem, which aided him in the killing of his brethren. And the men of Shechem set liars in wait for him in the top of the mountains, and they robbed all that came along that way by them, and it was told Abimelech, and Gal, the son of Ebed, came with his brethren, and went over to Shechem, and the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. And they went out into the fields, and gathered their vineyards, and trowed the grapes, and made merry, and went to the house of their god, and did not eat and drink, and cursed Abimelech. And Gal, the son of Ebed, said, Who is Abimelech, and who is Shechem, that we should serve him? Is not he the son of Jerubbabel? And Zebul, his officer, serve the men of Hamor, the father of Shechem? For why should we serve him? And would to God this people were under my hand, then would I remove Abimelech. And he said to Abimelech, Increase thine army, and come out. And when Zebuel, the ruler of the city, heard the words of Gal, the son of Ebed, his anger was kindled, and he sent messengers unto Abimelech privily, saying, Behold, Gal, the son of Ebed, and his brethren be come to Shechem, and behold, they fortify the city against thee. Now, therefore, up by night, thou and the people that is with thee, and lie in wait in the field. And it shall be that in the morning, as soon as the sun is up, thou shalt rise early, and set upon the city, and, behold, when he and the people that is with him come out against thee, then mayest thou do to him, as thou shalt find occasion. And Abimelech rose up and all the people that were with him, by night, and they laid wait against Shechem, in four companies. And Gal, the son of Ebed, went out, and stood in the entering of the gate of the city. And 
Abimelech rose up, and the people that were with him, from lying in wait. And when Gal saw the people, he said to Zebuel, Behold, there come people down from the top of the mountains. And as Zebuel said unto him, Thou seest the shadow of the mountains, as if they were men. And Gal spake again, and said, See, there come people down by the middle of the land, and another company come along by the plain of Maonenim. And when Zebuel unto him, Where is now thy mouth, wherewith thou saidst, Who is Abimelech, that we should serve him? Is not this the people that thou hast despised? Go out, I pray now, and fight with them. And Gal went out before the men of Shechem, and fought with Abimelech. And Abimelech chased him, and he fled before him, and many were overthrown and wounded, even unto the entering of the gate. And Abimelech dwelt in Aruma. And Zebul thrust out Gal and his brethren, that they should not dwell in Shechem. And it came to pass on the morrow, that the people went out into the field, and they told Abimelech. And he took the people, and divided them into three companies, and laid wait in the field, and looked, and, behold, the people were come forth out of the city, and he rose up against them, and smote them. And Abimelech, and the company that was with him, rushed forward, and stood in the entering of the gate of the city, and the two other companies ran upon all the people that were in the fields, and slew them. And Abimelech fought against the city all that day, and he took the city, and slew the people that was therein, and beat down the city, and sowed it with salt. And when all the men of the tower of Shechem heard that, they entered into an hold of the house of the god Bereth. And it was told of Imelech that all the men of the tower of Shechem were gathered together. And Abimelech got him up to Mount Zalman, he and all the people that were with him. And Abimelech took an axe in his hand, and cut down a bough from the trees, and took it, and laid it on his shoulder, and said unto the people that were with him, what ye have seen me do, make haste, and do as I have done. And all the people likewise cut down every man his bow, and followed Abimelech, and put them to the hold, and set the hold on fire upon them, so that all the men of the tower of Shechem died also, about a thousand men and women. Then went Abimelech to Thebes, and encamped against Thebes, and took it. But there was a strong tower within the city, and thither fled all the men and women, and all they of the city, and shut it to them, and got them up to the top of the tower. And Abimelech came unto the tower, and fought against it, and went hard unto the door of the tower, to burn it with fire. And a certain woman cast a piece of a millstone upon Abimelech's head, and all to break his skull. Then he called hastily unto the young man, his armor-bearer, and said unto him, Draw thy sword, and slay me, that men say not of me, a woman slew him. And his young man thrust him through, and he died. And when the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, they departed every man unto his place. Thus God rendered the wickedness of Abimelech, which he did unto his father in slaying his seventy brethren. And all the evil of the men of Shechem did God render upon their heads, and upon them came the curse of Jotham, the son of Jerubbabel. Chapter 10 And after Abimelech there arose to defend Israel Tola, the son of Puah, the son of Dado, a man of Issachar, 
and he dwelt in Shamir and Mount Ephraim. And he judged Israel twenty and three years, and died, and was buried in Shamir. And after him arose Jair, a Gileadite, and judged Israel twenty and two years. And he had thirty sons, that rode on thirty ass colts. And they had thirty cities, which are called havoth Jair, unto this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jair died, and was buried in Camon. Of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and served Balaam, and Ashtoreth, and the gods of Syria, and the gods of Zidon, and the gods of Moab, and all the gods of the children of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines, and forsook the Lord, and served not him. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines, and into the hands of the children of Ammon. And that year they vexed and oppressed the children of Israel. Eighteen years, all the children of Israel that were on the other side of Jordan, in the land of the Amorites, which is in Gilead. Moreover, the children of Ammon passed over Jordan to fight also against Judah, and against Benjamin, and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was sore distressed. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, saying, We have sinned against thee, both because we have forsaken our God, and also served Balaam. And the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Did not I deliver you from the Egyptians, and from the Amorites, from the children of Ammon, and from the Philistines, the Zidonians also, and the Amalekites, and the Maonites did oppress you? And ye cried to me, and I delivered you out of their hand. Ye have forsaken me, and served other gods. Wherefore I will deliver you no more. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. And the children of Israel said unto the Lord, We have sinned. Do thou unto us whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. Deliver us only, we pray thee, this day. And they put away the strange gods from among them, and served the Lord. And his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. Then the children of Ammon were gathered together, and encamped in Gilead. And the children of Israel assembled themselves together, and encamped at Mizpeh. And the people and princes of Gilead said one to another, what man is he that will begin to fight against the children of Ammon? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor, and he was the son of an harlot. And Gilead begat Jephthah. And Gilead's wife bare him sons, and his wife's sons grew up, and they thrust out Jephthah, and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brethren, and dwelt in the land of Tob, and there were gathered vain men to Jephthah, and went out with him. And it came to pass in process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. And it was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tob, and they said unto Jephthah, Come and be our captain, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, Did ye not hate me, 
and expel me out of my father's house? And why are ye come unto me, now when ye are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, Therefore we turn again to thee now, that thou mayest go with us, and fight against the children of Ammon, and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, If ye bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon, and the Lord deliver them before me, shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, The Lord be witness between us, if we do not so according to thy words. Then Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and captain over them. And Jephthah uttered all his words before the Lord in Mizpah. And Jephthah sent messengers unto the king of the children of Ammon, saying, What hast thou to do with me, that thou art come against me to fight in my land? And the king of the children of Ammon answered unto the messengers of Jephthah, Because Israel took away my land when they came up out of Egypt, from Arnon even unto Jabbok, and unto Jordan. Now, therefore, restore those lands again peaceably. And Jephthah sent messengers again unto the children, and said unto him, Thus saith Jephthah, Israel took not away the land of Moab, nor the land of the children of Ammon. But when Israel came up from Egypt, and walked through the wilderness unto the Red Sea, and came to Kadesh, then Israel sent messengers unto the king of Edom, saying, Let me, I pray thee, pass through thy land. But the king of Edom would not hearken thereto, and in like manner they sent unto the king of Moab, but he would not consent. And Israel abode in Kadesh. Then they went along through the wilderness, and compassed the land of Edom and the land of Moab, and came by the east side of the land of Moab, and pitched on the other side of Arnon, but came not within the border of Moab, for Arnon was the border of Moab. And Israel sent messengers unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, the king of Heshbon. And Israel said unto him, Let us pass, we pray thee, through thy land, into my place. But Sihon trusted not Israel to pass through his coast. But Sihon gathered all his people together, and pitched in Jahaz, and fought against Israel. And the Lord God of Israel delivered Sihon and all his people into the hand of Israel, and they smote them. So Israel possessed all the land of the Amorites, the inhabitants of that country. And they possessed all the coasts of the Amorites, from Arnon even unto Jabbok, and from the wilderness even unto Jordan. So now the Lord God of Israel hath dispossessed the Amorites from before his people Israel. And shouldest thou possess it? Will not thou possess that which Chemosh thy God giveth thee to possess? So whomsoever the Lord our God shall drive out from before us, we will possess. And now art thou any thing better than Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever strive against Israel, or did he ever fight against them? While Israel dwelt in Heshbon, and her towns, and in Eroer, and her towns, and in all the cities that be along by the coasts of Arnon, three hundred years, why therefore did ye not recover them within that time? Wherefore, I have not sinned against thee, but thou doest me wrong to war against me. The Lord, the judge, be judge this day between the children of Israel and the children of Ammon. Howbeit the king of the children of Ammon hearkened not unto the words of Jephthah which he sent him.
then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh, and passed over Mizpah of Gilead, and from Mizpah of Gilead he passed over unto the children of Ammon. And Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord, and said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into mine hands, then it shall be that whosoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. So Jephthah passed over unto the children of Ammon to fight against them, and the Lord delivered them into his hands. And he smote them from Aror, even till thou come to Minith, even twenty cities, and unto the plain of the vineyards, with a very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. And Jephthah came to Mizpah unto his house, and, behold, his daughter came out to meet him, with timbrels and with dances, and she was his only child. Beside her he had neither son nor daughter. And it came to pass, when he saw her, that he rent his clothes, and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low, and thou art one of them that trouble me. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. And she said unto him, My father, if thou hast opened thy mouth unto the Lord, do to me according to that which hath proceeded out of thy mouth. For as much as the Lord hath taken vengeance for thee of thine enemies, even of the children of Ammon. And she said unto her father, Let this thing be done for me. Let me alone two months that I may go up and down upon the mountains, and bewail my virginity, I and my fellows. And he said, Go. And he sent her away for two months, and she went with her companions, and bewailed her virginity upon the mountains. And it came to pass, at the end of two months, that she returned unto her father, who did with her according to his vow, which he had vowed, and she knew no man. And it was a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went yearly to lament the daughter of Jephthah the Gileadite four days in a year. Chapter 12 and the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together, and went northward, and said unto Jephthah, Wherefore passedst thou over to fight against the children of Ammon, and didst not call us to go with thee? We will burn thine house upon thee with fire. And Jephthah said unto them, I and my people were at great strife with the children of Ammon, and when I called you, ye delivered me not out of their hands. And when I saw that ye delivered me not, I put my life in my hands, and passed over against the children of Ammon, and the Lord delivered them into my hand. Wherefore then are ye come up unto me this day, to fight against me? Then Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead, and fought with Ephraim. And the men of Gilead smote Ephraim, because they said, Ye Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim among the Ephraimites, and among the Manassites. And the Gileadites took the passages of Jordan before the Ephraimites. And it was so that when those Ephraimites which were escaped said, 
let me go over. But the men of Gilead said unto him, Art thou an Ephraimite? If he said, Nay, then they said unto him, Say now, Shiboleth. And he said, Siboleth, for he could not frame to pronounce it right. Then they took him and slew him at the passages of Jordan, and there fell at that time of the Ephraimites forty and two thousand. And Jephthah judged Israel six years. Then died Jephthah the Gileadite, and was buried in one of the cities of Gilead. And after him Ibzan of Bethlehem judged Israel, and he had thirty sons and thirty daughters, whom he sent abroad, and took in thirty daughters from abroad for his sons. And he judged Israel seven years. Then died Ibzan, and was buried at Bethlehem. And after him Elon, a Zebulonite, judged Israel. And he judged Israel ten years. And Elon the Zebulonite died, and was buried in Ajalon, in the country of Zebulun. And after him Abdon, the son of Hillel, a Parathonite, judged Israel. And he had forty sons and thirty nephews, that rode on threescore and ten as colts. And he judged Israel eight years. And Abdon the son of Hillel the Parathonite died, and was buried in Parathon, in the land of Ephraim, in the mount of the Amalekites. Chapter 13 And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren, and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman, and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren, and bearest not. But thou shalt conceive, and bear a son. Now, therefore, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For, lo, thou shalt conceive, and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God, very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive, and bear a son. And now drink no wine, nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God, from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah entreated the Lord, and said, O my Lord, let the man of God which thou didst send Come again unto us, and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah. And the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman made haste, and ran, and shewed her husband, and said unto him, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me, that came unto me the other day. And Manoah arose, and went after his wife, and came to the man, and said unto him, Art thou the man that spakest unto the woman? And he said, 
I am. And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child, and how shall we do unto him? And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of any thing that cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I commanded, her let her observe. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we shall have made ready a kid for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread. And if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name, that when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honour? And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering, and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord. And the angel did wondrously. And Manoah and his wife looked on. For it came to pass, when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar, that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. And Manoah and his wife looked on it, and fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die, because we have seen God. But his wife said unto him, If the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have shewed us all these things, nor would as yet this time have told us such things as these. And the woman bare a son, and called his name Samson. And the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Eshtael. Chapter 14 And Samson went down to Timnath, and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up, and told his father and his mother, and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren, or among all my people, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord, that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Then went Samson down, and his father and his mother, to Timnath, and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And, behold, a young lion roared against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid, and he had nothing in his hand. But he told not his father or his mother what he had done. And he went down, and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. And after a time he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion, and, behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hands, and went on, eating, and came to his father and mother. 
and he gave them, and they did eat. But he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of a lion. So his father went down unto the woman, and Samson made there a feast, for so used the young men to do. And it came to pass, when they saw him, that they brought thirty companions to be with him. And Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you. If you can certainly declare it me within the seven days of the feast, and find it out, then I will give you thirty sheets, and thirty change of garments. But if ye cannot declare it me, then shall ye give me thirty sheets, and thirty change of garments. And they said unto him, Put forth thy riddle, that we may hear it. And he said unto them, Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice thy husband, that he may declare unto us the riddle, lest we burn thee and thy father's house with fire. Have ye called us to take what we have? Is it not so? And Samson's wife wept before him, and said, Thou dost but hate me, and lovest me not. Thou hast put forth a riddle unto the children of my people, and hast not told it me. And he said unto her, Behold, I have not told it my father, nor my mother, and shall I tell it thee? But she wept before him the seven days, while their feast lasted, and it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her, because she lay sore upon him. And she told the riddle to the children of her people, and the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day, before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey, and what is stronger than a lion? And he said unto them, If ye had not ploughed with my heifer, ye had not found out my riddle. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon, and slew thirty men of them, and took their spoil, and gave change of garments unto them which expounded the riddle. And his anger was kindled, and he went up to his father's house. But Samson's wife was given to his companion, whom he had used as his friend. Chapter 15 But it came to pass, within a while after, in the time of wheat harvest, that Samson visited his wife with a kid, and he said, I will go in to my wife, into the chamber. But her father would not suffer him to go in. And her father said, I verily thought that thou hadst utterly hated her. Therefore I gave her to thy companion. Is not her younger sister fairer than she? Take her, I pray thee, instead of her. And Samson said concerning them, Now shall I be more blameless than the Philistines, though I do them a displeasure. And Samson went and caught three hundred foxes, and took firebrands, and turned tail to tail, and put the firebrand in the midst between two tails. And when he had set the brands on fire, he let them go into the standing corn of the Philistines, and burnt up both the shocks, and also the standing corn, with the vineyards and olives. Then the Philistines said, Who hath done this? And they answered, 
Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he had taken his wife and given her to his companion. And the Philistines came up and burnt her and her father with fire. And Samson said unto them, Though ye have done this, yet will I be avenged of you, and after that I will cease. And he smote them hip and thigh with a great slaughter. And he went down and dwelt in the top of the rock Etam. Then the Philistines went up and pitched in Judah, and spread themselves in Lehi. And the men of Judah said, Why are ye come up against us? And they answered, To bind Samson are we come up, to do to him as he hath done to us. Then three thousand men of Judah went to the top of the rock, Etam, and said to Samson, Knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? What is this that thou hast done unto us? And he said unto them, As they did unto me, so have I done unto them. And they said unto him, We are come to bind thee, that we may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, Swear unto me, that ye will not fall upon me yourselves. And they spake unto him, saying, No, but we will bind thee fast, and deliver thee into their hand. But surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him with two new cords, and brought him up from the rock. And when he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire, and his bands loosed from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone. And he found a new jawbone of an ass, and put forth his hand and took it, and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, With the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass, have I slain a thousand men. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand, and called that place Ramoth Lehi. And he was sore athirst and called on the Lord, and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die for thirst, and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? But God clave an hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout, and when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Wherefore he called the name thereof en which is in Lehi unto this day. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines twenty years. Chapter 16 Then went Samson to Gaza, and saw there an harlot, and went in unto her. And it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson is come hither. And they compassed him in, and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city, and were quiet all the night, saying, In the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him. And Samson lay till midnight, and arose at midnight, and took the doors of the gate of the city, and the two posts, and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders, and carried them to the top of an hill that is before Hebron. And it came to pass afterward, 
that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her, and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him. And we will give thee, every one of us, eleven hundred pieces of silver. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. And Samson said unto her, if they bind me with seven green withs that were never dried, then shall I be weak, and be as another man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green withs which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green withs which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he brake the withs, as a thread of tow is broken when it toucheth the fire. So his strength was not known. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me, and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new robes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak, and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new ropes, and bound him therewith, and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait abiding in the chamber, and he brake them from off his arms like a thread. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me, and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web. And she fastened it with the pin, and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awaked out of his sleep, and went away with the pin, the beam, and with the web. And she said unto him, How canst thou say, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass, when she pressed him daily with her words, and urged him, so that his soul was vexed unto death that he told her with all his heart, and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak, and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath shewed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her, and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, 
the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep, and said, I will go out as at other times before, and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him, and put out his eyes, and brought him down to Gaza, and bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison-house. Howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Then the lords of the Philistines gathered them together for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon, their god, and to rejoice. For they said, Our god hath delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their god, for they said, Our god hath delivered into our hands our enemy, and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us sport. And he made them sport, and they set him between the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there, and there were upon the roof about three thousand men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson called unto the Lord, and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood, and on which it was borne up, of the one with his right hand, and of the other with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the lords, and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Then his brethren and all the house of his father came down and took him, and brought him up, and buried him between Zorah and Eshtael, in the burying place of Manoah his father. And he judged Israel twenty years. And there was a man of Mount Ephraim, whose name was Micah. And he said unto his mother, the eleven hundred shekels of silver that were taken from thee, about which thou cursedst, and spakest of also in mine ears, behold, the silver is with me, I took it. And his mother said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my son. And when he had restored the eleven hundred shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I had wholly dedicated the silver unto the Lord from my hand for my son, to make a graven image, and a molten image. Now, therefore, I will restore it unto thee. Yet he restored the money unto his mother, and his mother took two hundred shekels of silver, and gave them to the founder who made thereof a graven image and a molten image, and they were in the house of Micah. And the man Micah had an house of gods, and made an ephod, and teraphim, and consecrated one of his sons, who became his priest. In those days there was no king in Israel, 
but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And there was a young man out of Bethlehem, Judah, of the family of Judah, who was a Levite, and he sojourned there. And the man departed out of the city from Bethlehem, Judah, to sojourn, where he could find a place. And he came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micah, as he journeyed. And Micah said unto him, Whence comest thou? And he said unto him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem, Judah, and I go to sojourn where I may find a place. And Micah said unto him, Dwell with me, and be unto me a father and a priest, and I will give thee ten shekels of silver by the year, and a suit of apparel, and thy victuals. So the Levite went in. And the Levite was content to dwell with the man, and the young man was son to him as one of his sons. And Micah consecrated the Levite, and the young man became his priest, and was in the house of Micah. Then said Micah, now know I that the Lord will do me good, seeing I have a Levite to my priest. In those days there was no king in Israel, and in those days the tribe of the Danites sought them an inheritance to dwell in, for unto that day all their inheritance had not fallen unto them among the tribes of Israel. And the children of Dan sent of their family five men from the coasts, men of valor, from Zorah and from Eshtael, to spy out the land, and to search it. And they said unto him, Go, search the land. Who, when they came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micah, they lodged there. When they were by the house of Micah, they knew the voice of the young man, the Levite. And they turned in thither, and said unto him, Who brought thee hither? And what makest thou in this place? And what makest thou in this place? And what hast thou here? And he said unto them, Thus and thus dealeth Micah with me, and he hath hired me, and I am his priest. And they said unto him, Ask counsel, we pray thee, of God, that we may know whether our way which we go shall be prosperous. And the priest said unto them, Go in peace, before the Lord is your way wherein ye go. Then the five men departed, and came to Laish, and saw the people that were therein, how they dwelt careless after the manner of the Zidonians, quiet and secure, and there was no magistrate in the land that might put them to shame in anything, and they were far from the Zidonians, and had no business with any man. And they came unto their brethren, to Zorah and Eshtael, and their brethren said unto them, What say ye? And they said, Arise, that we may go up against them. For we have seen the land, and behold, it is very good. And are ye still? Be not slothful to go and to enter to possess the land. When ye go, ye shall come unto a people secure, and to a large land. For God hath given it into your hands, a place where there is no want of any thing that is in the earth. And there went from thence of the family of the Danites, out of Zorah and out of Eshtael, six hundred men appointed with weapons of war. And they went up and pitched in kirjath Jearm in Judah, wherefore they called that place Mahanadin unto this day. Behold, it is behind kirjath Jearm. 
and they passed thence unto Mount Ephraim, and came unto the house of Micah. Then answered the five men that went to spy out the country of Laish, and said unto their brethren, Do ye know that there is in these houses an ephod, and teraphim, and a graven image, and a molten image? Now therefore consider what ye have to do. And they turned thitherward, and came to the house of the young man, the Levite, even unto the house of Micah, and saluted him. And the six hundred men appointed with their weapons of war, which were the children of Dan, stood by the entering of the gate. And the five men that went to spy out the land, went up, and came in thither, and took the graven image, and the ephod, and the teraphim, and the molten image. And the priest stood in the entering of the gate, with the six hundred men that were appointed, with weapons of war. And these went into Micah's house, and fetched the carved image, the ephod, and the teraphim, and the molten image. Then said the priest unto them, What do ye? And they said unto him, Hold thy peace, lay thine hand upon thy mouth, and go with us, and be to us a father and a priest. Is it better for thee to be a priest unto the house of one man, or that thou be a priest unto a tribe and a family in Israel? And the priest's heart was glad, and he took the ephod, and the teraphim, and the graven image, and went in the midst of the people. So they turned and departed, and put the little ones, and the cattle, and the carriage before them. And when they were a good way from the house of Micah, the men that were in the houses near to Micah's house were gathered together, and overtook the children of Dan. And they cried unto the children of Dan, and they turned their faces and said unto Micah, What aileth thee that thou comest with such a company? And he said, Ye have taken away my gods which I made and the priest, and ye are gone away, and what have I more? And what is this that ye say unto me, What aileth thee? And the children of Dan said unto him, Let not thy voice be heard among us, lest angry fellows run upon thee, and thou lose thy life with the lives of thy household. And the children of Dan went their way, and when Micah saw that they were too strong for him, he turned and went back unto his house. And they took the things which Micah had made, and the priest which he had, and came unto Laish, unto a people that were quiet and secure. And they smote them with the edge of the sword, and burnt the city with fire. And there was no deliverer, because it was far from Zidon, and they had no business with any man. And it was in the valley that lieth by Bethrehob. And they built a city, and dwelt therein. And they called the name of the city Dan, after the name of Dan their father, who was born unto Israel. Howbeit the name of the city was Laish, at the first. And the children of Dan set up the graven image. And Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, he and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan, until the day of captivity of the land. And they set them up Micah's graven image, which he made, all the time that the house of God was in Shiloh. End of section 24
the King James Version. Judges, chapters 19 to 21. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Michael Armenta. Chapter 19. And it came to pass in those days when there was no king in Israel, that there was a certain Levite sojourning on the side of Mount Ephraim, who took to him a concubine out of Bethlehem, Judah. And his concubine played the whore against him, and went away from him unto her father's house to Bethlehem, Judah, and was there four whole months. And her husband arose, and went after her, to speak friendly unto her, and to bring her again, having a servant with him, and a couple of asses. And she brought him into her father's house. And when the father of the damsel saw him, he rejoiced to meet him. And his father-in-law, the damsel's father, retained him. And he abode with him three days. So they did eat and drink, and lodged there. And it came to pass, on the fourth day, when they arose early in the morning, that he rose up to depart. And the damsel's father said unto his son-in-law, Comfort thine heart with a morsel of bread, and afterward go your way. And they sat down, and did eat and drink, both of them together. For the damsel's father had said unto the man, Be content, I pray thee, and tarry all night, and let thine heart be merry. And when the man rose up to depart, his father-in-law urged him. Therefore he lodged there again. And he arose early in the morning on the fifth day to depart. And the damsel's father said, Comfort thine heart, I pray thee. And they tarried until afternoon, and they did eat, both of them. And when the man rose up to depart, he, and his concubine, and his servant, his father-in-law, the damsel's father, said unto him, Behold, now the day draweth toward evening. I pray you, tarry all night. Behold, the day groweth to an end. Lodge here, that thine heart be merry, and to-morrow get you early on your way, that thou mayest go home. But the man would not tarry that night, but he rose up and departed, and came over against Jebus, which is Jerusalem. And there were with him two asses saddled, his concubine also was with him. And when they were by Jebus, the day was far spent. And the servant said unto his master, Come, I pray thee, and let us turn into this city of the Jebusites, and lodge in it. And his master said unto him, We will not turn aside hither into the city of a stranger that is not of the children of Israel. We will pass over to Gibeah. And he said unto his servant, Come, and let us draw near to one of these places to lodge all night, in Gibeah, or in Ramah. And they passed on, and went their way. And the sun went down upon them when they were by Gibeah, which belongeth to Benjamin. And they turned aside thither, to go in and to lodge in Gibeah. And when he went in, he sat him down in a street of the city, for there was no man that took them into his house to lodging. And, behold, there came an old man from his work out of the field at even, which was also of Mount Ephraim, and he sojourned in Gibeah. But the men of the place were Benjamites. And when he had lifted up his eyes, he saw a wayfaring man in the street of the city. And the old man said, Whither goest thou, and whence comest thou? And he said unto him, We are passing from Bethlehem, Judah, toward the side of Mount Ephraim. From thence am I. 
and I went to Bethlehem, Judah, but I am now going to the house of the Lord, and there is no man that receiveth me to house. Yet there is both straw and provender for our asses, and there is bread and wine also for me, and for thy handmaid, and for the young man which is with thy servants. There is no want of anything. And the old man said, Peace be with thee, howsoever let all thy wants lie upon me, only lodge not in the street. So he brought him into his house, and gave provender unto the asses, and they washed their feet, and did eat and drink. Now, as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, beset the house round about, and beat at the door, and spake to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring forth the man that came into thine house, that we may know him. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them, and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly, seeing that this man is come into mine house, do not this folly. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Them I will bring out now, and humble ye them, and do with them which seemeth good unto you. But unto this man do not so vile a thing. But the men would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine, and brought her forth unto them, and they knew her, and abused her all the night until the morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. Then came the woman in the dawning of the day, and fell down at the door of the man's house, where her lord was, till it was light. And her lord rose up in the morning, and opened the doors of the house, and went out to go his way. And, behold, the woman, his concubine, was fallen down at the door of the house, and her hands were upon the threshold. And he said unto her, Up, and let us be going. But none answered. Then the man took her up upon an ass, and the man rose up and got him unto his place. And when he was come into his house, he took a knife, and laid hold on his concubine, and divided her, together with her bones, into twelve pieces, and sent her into all the coasts of Israel. And it was so, that all that saw it said, There was no such deed done nor seen from the day that the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt unto this day. Consider of it, take advice, and speak your minds. Chapter 20 Then all the children of Israel went out, and the congregation was gathered together as one man, from Dan even to Beersheba, with the land of Gilead, unto the Lord in Mizpah. And the chief of all the people, even of all the tribes of Israel, presented themselves in the assembly of the people of God, four hundred thousand footmen that drew sword. Now, the children of Benjamin heard that the children of Israel were gone up to Mizpah. Then said the children of Israel, Tell us, how was this wickedness? And the Levite, the husband of the woman that was slain, answered and said, I came unto Gibeah that belongeth to Benjamin, I and my concubine, to lodge. And the men of Gibeah rose against me, and beset the house round about upon me by night, and thought to have slain me. And my concubine have they forced that she is dead. And I took my concubine, and cut her in pieces, 
and sent her throughout all the country of the inheritance of Israel. For they have committed lewdness and folly in Israel. Behold, ye are all children of Israel. Give here your advice and counsel. And all the people arose as one man, saying, We will not any of us go to his tent, will we any of us turn into his house? But now this shall be the thing which we will do to Gibeah. We will go up by lot against it, and we will take ten men of an hundred throughout all the tribes of Israel, and an hundred of a thousand, and a thousand out of ten thousand, to fetch victual for the people, that they may do when they come to Gibeah of Benjamin, according to all the folly that they have wrought in Israel. So all the men of Israel were gathered against the city, knit together as one man. And the tribes of Israel sent men through all the tribe of Benjamin, saying, What wickedness is this that is done among you? Now, therefore, deliver us the men, the children of Belial, which are in Gibeah, that we may put them to death, and put away evil from Israel. But the children of Benjamin would not hearken to the voice of their brethren, the children of Israel. But the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together out of the cities unto Gibeah, to go out to battle against the children of Israel. And the children of Benjamin were numbered at that time out of the cities twenty and six thousand men that drew sword, beside the inhabitants of Gibeah, which were numbered seven hundred chosen men. Among all this people there were seven hundred chosen men left-handed. Every one could sling stones at an hair-breadth and not miss. And the men of Israel beside Benjamin, were numbered four hundred thousand men that drew sword. All these were men of war. And the children of Israel arose, and went up to the house of God, and asked counsel of God, and said, Which of us shall go up first to the battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. And the children of Israel rose up in the morning, and encamped against Gibeah. And the men of Israel went out to battle against Benjamin. And the men of Israel put themselves in array to fight against them at Gibeah. And the children of Benjamin came forth out of Gibeah, and destroyed down to the ground of the Israelites that day, twenty and two thousand men. And the people, the men of Israel, encouraged themselves, and set their battle again in array in the place where they put themselves in array the first day. And the children of Israel went up and wept before the Lord, until even, and asked counsel of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up again to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? And the Lord said, Go up against him. And the children of Israel came near against the children of Benjamin the second day. And Benjamin went forth against them out of Gibeah the second day, and destroyed down to the ground of the children of Israel again eighteen thousand men. All these drew the sword. Then all the children of Israel and all the people went up, and came unto the house of God, and wept, and sat there before the Lord, and fasted that day until even and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And the children of Israel inquired of the Lord, for the ark of the covenant of God was there in those days, and Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, stood before it in those days, saying, Shall I yet again go out to battle against the children of Benjamin? 
or shall I cease? And the Lord said, Go up, for tomorrow I will deliver them into thine hand. And Israel set liars in wait round about Gibeah. And the children of Israel went up against the children of Benjamin on the third day, and put themselves in array against Gibeah as at other times. And the children of Benjamin went out against the people, and were drawn away from the city, and they began to smite of the people, and kill, as at other times, in the highways, of which one goeth up to the house of God, and the other to Gibeah in the field, about thirty men of Israel. And the children of Benjamin said, They are smitten down before us, as at the first. But the children of Israel said, Let us flee, and draw them from the city unto the highways. And all the men of Israel rose up out of their place, and put themselves in array at Baal Tamar. And the liars in wait of Israel came forth out of their places, even out of the meadows of Gibeah. And there came against Gibeah ten thousand chosen men out of all Israel. And the battle was sore, but they knew not that evil was near them. And the Lord smote Benjamin before Israel, and the children of Israel destroyed of the Benjamites that day twenty and five thousand and an hundred men. All these drew the sword. So the children of Benjamin saw that they were smitten. For the men of Israel gave place to the Benjamites, because they trusted unto the liars in wait which they had set beside Gibeah. And the liars in wait hasted, and rushed upon Gibeah. And the liars in wait drew themselves along, and smote all the city with the edge of the sword. Now there was an appointed sign between the men of Israel and the liars in wait, that they should make a great flame with smoke rise up out of the city. And when the men of Israel retired in the battle, Benjamin began to smite and kill of the men of Israel about thirty persons, for they said, Surely they are smitten down before us, as in the first battle. But when the flame began to arise up out of the city with a pillar of smoke, the Benjamites looked behind them, and, behold, the flame of the city ascended up to heaven. And when the men of Israel turned again, the men of Benjamin were amazed, for they saw that evil was come upon them. Therefore they turned their backs before the men of Israel unto the way of the wilderness. But the battle overtook them, and them which came out of the cities they destroyed in the midst of them. Thus they enclosed the Benjamites round about, and chased them, and trod them down with ease over against Gibeah toward the sun rising. And there fell of Benjamin eighteen thousand men. All these were men of valor. And they turned and fled toward the wilderness unto the rock of Rimon, and they gleaned of them in the highways five thousand men, and pursued hard after them unto Gidom, and slew two thousand men of them, so that all which fell that day of Benjamin were twenty and five thousand men that drew the sword. All these were men of valor. But six hundred men turned and fled to the wilderness unto the rock Rimon, and abode in the rock Rimon four months. And the men of Israel turned again upon the children of Benjamin, and smote them with the edge of the sword, as well the men of every city, as the beast, and all that came to hand. Also they set on fire all the cities that they came to. Chapter 21 
Now the men of Israel had sworn in Mizpah, saying, There shall not any of us give his daughter unto Benjamin to wife. And the people came to the house of God, and abode there till even before God, and lifted up their voices, and wept sore, and said, O Lord God of Israel, why is this come to pass in Israel, that there should be to-day one tribe lacking in Israel? And it came to pass on the morrow that the people rose early, and built there an altar, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. And the children of Israel said, who is there among all the tribes of Israel that came not up with the congregation unto the Lord? For they had made a great oath concerning him that came not up to the Lord at Mizpah, saying, He shall surely be put to death. And the children of Israel repented them for Benjamin their brother, and said, there is one tribe cut off from Israel this day. How shall we do for wives for them that remain, seeing we have sworn by the Lord that we will not give them of our daughters to wives? And they said, What one is there of the tribes of Israel that came not up to Mizpah of the Lord? And, behold, there came none to the camp, from Jabesh-Gilead to the assembly. For the people were numbered, and, behold, there were none of the inhabitants of Jabesh-Gilead there. And the congregation sent thither twelve thousand men of the valiantest, and commanded them, saying, Go and smite the inhabitants of Jabesh-Gilead with the edge of the sword, with the women and the children. And this is the thing that ye shall do. Ye shall utterly destroy every male and every woman that hath lain by man. And they found among the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead four hundred young virgins that had known no man by lying with any male. And they brought them unto the camp to Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan. And the whole congregation sent some to speak to the children of Benjamin that were in the rock Rimon and to call peaceably unto them. And Benjamin came again at that time, and they gave them wives, which they had saved alive of the woman of Jabesh-Gilead, and yet so they sufficed them not. And the people repented them for Benjamin, because that the Lord had made a breach in the tribes of Israel. Then the elders of the congregation said, how shall we do for wives of them that remain, seeing the women are destroyed out of Benjamin? And they said, There must be an inheritance for them that be escaped of Benjamin, that a tribe be not destroyed out of Israel. Howbeit, we may not give them wives of our daughters. For the children of Israel have sworn, saying, Cursed be he that giveth a wife to Benjamin. Then they said, Behold, there is a feast of the Lord in Shiloh, yearly, in a place which is on the north side of Bethel, on the east side of the highway that goeth up from Bethel to Shechem, and on the south of Lebanon. Therefore they commanded the children of Benjamin, saying, Go and lie in wait in the vineyards, and see, and behold, if the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance in dances, then come ye out of the vineyard, and catch you every man his wife of the daughters of Shiloh, and go to the land of Benjamin. And it shall be, when their fathers or their brethren come unto us to complain, that we will say unto them, Be favourable unto them for our sakes, because we reserved not to each man his wife in the war, for ye did not give unto them at this time, that ye should be guilty. And the children of Benjamin did so, and took them wives, according to their number, of them that danced, whom they caught, and they went and returned unto their inheritance. And 
repaired the cities, and dwelt in them. And the children of Israel departed thence at that time, every man to his tribe and to his family. And they went out from thence, every man to his inheritance. In those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. End of section 25section twenty six of the holy bible the king james version ruth chapters one through four this librivox recording is in the public domain recorded by michael armenta chapter one now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of bethlehem judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi, and the name of his two sons Melan and Chilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons, and they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. And Malon and Chilion died also, both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law, that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughters-in-law with her, and they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, Return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, as ye have dealt with the dead, and with me. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice, and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will ye go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb, that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have an husband. If I should say, I have hope, if I should have an husband also to-night, and should also bear sons, would ye tarry for them till they were grown? Would ye stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law. But Ruth clave unto her, and she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people, and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee, for whither thou goest I will go, and where thou lodgest I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy god my god. Where thou diest will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. 
so they too went until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass, when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them. And they said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again, empty. Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab. And they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. Chapter 2 And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field, and glean ears of corn after him, in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went, and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. And, behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem, and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. Then said Boaz unto his servant that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, it is the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came, and hath continued, even from the morning until now, that she tarried a little in the house. Then Boaz said unto Ruth, Hearst thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. Let thine eye be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art athirst, go unto the vessels, and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face, and bowed herself to the ground, and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes, that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? And Boaz answered, and said unto her, It hath fully been shewed me, all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law, since the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father, and thy mother, and the land of thy nativity, and come unto a people which thou knewest not heretofore. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. Then she said, Let me find favour in thy sight, my Lord, for that thou hast comforted me, and for that thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid, though I be not like unto one of thine handmaidens. And Boaz said unto her, At mealtime come thou hither, and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and he reached her parched corn, and she did eat, and was sufficed and left. And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not, and let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her, and leave them, that she may glean them, and rebuke her not. 
so she gleaned in the field until even, and beat out that she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. And she took it up, and went into the city. And her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned, and she brought forth, and gave to her that she had reserved after she was sufficed. And her mother-in-law said unto her, Where hast thou gleaned to-day? And where wroughtest thou? Blessed be he that did take knowledge of thee. And she shewed her mother-in-law with whom she had wrought, and said, The man's name with whom I wrought to-day is Boaz. And Naomi said unto her daughter-in-law, Blessed be he of the Lord, who hath not left off his kindness to the living and to the dead. And Naomi said unto her, The man is near of kin unto us, one of our next kinsmen. And Ruth the Moabitess said, He said unto me also, Thou shalt keep fast by my young men, until they have ended all my harvest. And Naomi said unto Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that thou go out with his maidens, that they meet thee not in any other field. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz, to glean unto the end of barley harvest and of wheat harvest, and dwelt with her mother-in-law. Chapter 3 Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee? that it might be well with thee. And now is not Boaz of our kindred, with whose maidens thou wast? Behold, he winnoweth barley to-night in the threshing-floor. Wash thyself, therefore, and anoint thee, and put thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the floor. Make not thyself known unto the man, until he shall have done eating and drinking. And it shall be, when he lieth down, that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie, and thou shalt go in, and uncover his feet, and lay thee down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. And she said unto her, All that thou sayest unto me will I do. And she went down unto the floor, and did according to all that her mother-in-law bade her. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn, and she came softly, and uncovered his feet, and laid her down. And it came to pass at midnight, that the man was afraid, and turned himself, and, behold, a woman lay at his feet. And he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth, thine handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman. And he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast shewed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as thou followedst not young men, whether poor or rich, and now, my daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that thou requirest, for all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. And now it is true that I am thy near kinsman, howbeit there is a kinsman nearer than I. Tarry this night, and it shall be in the morning, that if he will perform unto thee the part of a kinsman, well, let him do the kinsman's part. But if he will not do the part of a kinsman to thee, then will I do the part of a kinsman to thee, as the Lord liveth. Lie down until the morning. And she lay at his feet until the morning. And she rose up before one could know another. And he said, let it not be known that a woman came into the floor. Also he said, Bring the veil that thou hast upon thee. 
and hold it. And when she held it, he measured six measures of barley, and laid it on her, and she went into the city. And when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, Who art thou, my daughter? And she told her all that the man had done to her. And she said, These six measures of barley gave he me. For he said unto me, Go not empty unto thy mother-in-law. Then said she, Sit still, my daughter, until thou know how the matter will fall. For the man will not be in rest until he have finished the thing this day. Chapter 4 Then went Boaz up to the gate, and set him down there. And behold, the kinsman of whom Boaz spake came by, unto whom he said, Ho, oh, such a one, turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city, and said, Sit ye down here. And they sat down. And he said unto the kinsmen, Naomi, that is come again out of the country of Moab, selleth a parcel of land, which was our brother, Elimelech's. And I thought to advertise thee, saying, Buy it before the inhabitants, and before the elders of my people. If thou wilt redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me that I may know, for there is none to redeem it besides thee, and I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Then said Boaz, What day thou buyest of the field of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of the dead to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar mine own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. Now this was the manner in former time in Israel concerning redeeming and concerning changing, for to confirm all things. A man plucked off his shoe, and gave it to his neighbors, and this was a testimony in Israel. Therefore the kinsman said unto Boaz, Buy it for thee. So he drew off his shoe, and Boaz said unto the elders, and unto all the people, Ye are witnesses this day, that I have bought all that was Elimelech's, and all that was Chelion's and Malon's, of the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Malon, have I purchased to be my wife, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren, and from the gate of his place. Ye are witnesses this day. And all the people that were in the gate, and the elders, said, We are witnesses. The Lord make the woman that is come into thine house like Rachel and like Leah, which too did build the house of Israel. And do thou worthily in Ephrata, and be famous in Bethlehem. And let thy house be like the house of fairies, whom Tamar bare unto Judah, of the seed which the Lord shall give thee of this young woman. So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. And the women said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which hath not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel, and he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life, and a nourisher of thine old age. For thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons, hath borne him. 
and naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it and the women her neighbours gave it a name saying there is a son born to naomi and they called his name obed he is the father of jesse the father of david now these are the generations of fairies fairies begat hezron and hezron begat ram and ram begat aminadab and aminadab begat nashon and nashon begat salmon and salmon begat boaz and boaz begat obed and obed begat jesse and jesse begat david end of section 26section twenty seven of the holy bible the king james version first samuel chapters one through nine the slipper fox recording is in the public domain recording by michael armenta chapter one now there was a certain man of ramathaim zophim out of mount ephraim and his name was elkanah the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuf, an Ephrathite. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of the city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters, portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord had shut up her womb, and her adversary also provoked her sore, for to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so, year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept, and did not eat. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord, and she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. And she vowed a vow, and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Anna she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. 
Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. And Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way, and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. And they rose up in the morning early, and worshipped before the Lord, and returned, and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Anna, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived, that she bare a son, and called his name Samuel, saying, because I have asked him of the Lord. And the man, Elkanah, and all his house, went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Hannah went not up, for she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned, and then I will bring him, that he may appear before the Lord, and there Abide for ever. And Elkanah, her husband, said unto her, Do what seemeth thee good. Tarry until thou have weaned him. Only the Lord establish his word. So the woman abode, and gave her son suck until she weaned him. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her, with three bullocks, and one ephah of flour, and a bottle of wine, and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young, and they slew a bullock, and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here, praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshipped the Lord there. Chapter 2 And Hannah prayed, and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord, mine horn is exalted in the Lord, my mouth is enlarged over mine enemies, because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceeding proudly, let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry ceased, so that the barren hath borne seven and she that hath many children is waxed feeble. The Lord killeth, and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave, and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor, and maketh rich. He bringeth low, and lifteth up. He raiseth the poor out of the dust and lifteth the beggar from the dunghill, to set them among princes, and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. 
the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king, and exalt the horn of his anointed. And Elkanah went to Ramah, to his house. And the child did minister unto the Lord before Eli the priest. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. And the priest's custom with the people was that, when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came, while the flesh was in seething, with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand, and he struck it into the pan, or kettle, or cauldron, or pot. All that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself. So they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came thither. Also, before they burnt the fat, the priest's servant came, and said to the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to roast for the priest, for he will not have sodden flesh of thee, but raw. And if any man said unto him, Let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as thy soul desireth, then he would answer him, Nay, but thou shalt give it me now, and if not, I will take it by force. Wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord. For men abhorred the offering of the Lord. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child girded with a linen ephod. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat, and brought it to him from year to year, when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife, and said, The Lord give thee seed of this woman, for the loan which is lent to the Lord. And they went unto their own home. And the Lord visited Hannah, so that she conceived, and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child, Samuel, grew before the Lord. Now Eli was very old, and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel, and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he said unto them, Why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all this people. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. And the child Samuel grew on, and was in favor both with the Lord, and also with men. And there came a man of God unto Eli, and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Did I plainly appear unto the house of thy father, when they were in Egypt, in Pharaoh's house? And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon mine altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me? And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice, and at mine offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honorest thy sons above me, to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people? 
wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me for ever. But now the Lord saith, Be it far from me, for them that honour me will I honour, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Behold, the days come that I will cut off thine arm, and the arm of thy father's house, and there shalt not be an old man in thine house. And thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation, in all the wealth which God shall give Israel. And there shall not be an old man in thine house for ever. And the man of thine, whom I shall not cut off from mine altar, shall be to consume thine eyes, and to grieve thine heart, and all the increase of thine house shall die in the flower of their age. And this shall be a sign unto thee, that shall come upon thy two sons, on Hophni and Phinehas. In one day they shall die, both of them. And I will raise me up a faithful priest, that shall do according to that which is in mine heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before mine anointed for ever. And it shall come to pass, that every one that is left in thine house shall come and crouch to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread, and shall say, Put me, I pray thee, into one of the priest's offices, that I may eat a piece of bread. Chapter 3 And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time, when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim, that he could not see. And, ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep, that the Lord called, Samuel! And he ran unto Eli, and said, Here am I, for thou calledst me. And he said, I called not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli, and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not my son. Lie down again. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli, and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, and called, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of every one that heareth it shall tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house for ever, for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile. 
and he restrained them not. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli, that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice, nor offering for ever. And Samuel lay until the morning, and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, Here am I. And he said, What is the thing that the Lord hath said unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. God do so to thee, and more also if thou hide anything from me of all the things that he said unto thee. And Samuel told him every whit, and hid nothing from him. And he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Chapter 4 And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out against the Philistines to battle, and pitched beside Ebenezer, and the Philistines pitched in Aphek. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel, and when they joined battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines, and they slew of the army in the field about four thousand men. And when the people were come into the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore hath the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines? Let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that, when it cometh among us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh, that they might bring from thence the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of Hosts, which dwelleth between the cherubims. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. And when the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, What meaneth the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? And they understood that the ark of the Lord was come into the camp. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God is come into the camp. And they said, Woe unto us! for there hath not been such a thing heretofore. Woe unto us! Who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods? These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Be strong, and quit yourselves like men, O ye Philistines, that ye be not servants unto the Hebrews, as they have been to you. Quit yourselves like men, and fight. And the Philistines fought, and Israel was smitten. And they fled every man into his tent, and there was a very great slaughter. For there fell of Israel thirty thousand footmen. And the ark of God was taken, and the two sons of Eli Hophni and Phinehas were slain. And there ran a man of Benjamin out of the army, and came to Shiloh the same day with his clothes rent, and with earth upon his head. 
and when he came, lo, Eli sat upon a seat by the wayside, watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city, and told it, all the city cried out. And when Eli heard the noise of the crying, he said, What meaneth the noise of this tumult? And the man came in hastily, and told Eli. Now Eli was ninety and eight years old, and his eyes were dim, that he could not see. And the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army, and I fled to-day out of the army. And he said, What is there done, my son? And the messenger answered and said, Israel is fled before the Philistines, and there hath been also a great slaughter among the people, and thy two sons also, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead, and the ark of God is taken. And it came to pass, when he made mention of the ark of God, that he fell from off the seat backward by the side of the gate, and his neck brake, and he died, for he was an old man, and heavy. And he had judged Israel forty years. And his daughter-in-law, Phinehas's wife, was with child, near to be delivered, and when she heard the tidings that the ark of God was taken, and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and travailed, for her pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the women that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast borne a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it, and she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel, because the ark of God was taken, and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, The glory is departed from Israel, for the ark of God is taken. Chapter 5 and the Philistines took the ark of God, and brought it from Ebenezer unto Ashdod. When the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon, and set it by Dagon. And when they of Ashdod arose early on the morrow, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. And they took Dagon, and set him in his place again. And when they arose early on the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. And the head of Dagon, and both the palms of his hands, were cut off upon the threshold. Only the stump of Dagon was left to him. Therefore, neither the priests of Dagon, nor any that come into Dagon's house, tread on the threshold of Dagon, in Ashdod, unto this day. But the hand of the Lord was heavy upon them of Ashdod, and he destroyed them, and smote them with emeralds, even Ashdod, and the coasts thereof. And when the men of Ashdod saw that it was so, they said, The ark of the God of Israel shall not abide with us, for his hand is sore upon us, and upon Dagon our God. They sent, therefore, and gathered all the lords of the Philistines unto them, and said, What shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? And they answered, let the ark of the God of Israel be carried about unto Gath. And they carried the ark of the God of Israel about thither. And it was so that, after they had carried it about, the hand of the Lord was against the city, with a very great destruction. 
and he smote the men of the city, both small and great. And they had emeralds in their secret parts. Therefore they sent the ark of God to Ekron, and it came to pass, as the ark of God came to Ekron, that the Ekronites cried out, saying, They have brought about the ark of the God of Israel to us, to slay us and our people. So they sent and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines, and said, Send away the ark of the God of Israel, and let it go again to his own place, that it slay us not and our people. For there was a deadly destruction throughout all the city. The hand of God was very heavy there, and the men that died not were smitten with the emeralds. And the cry of the city went up into heaven. Chapter 6 And the ark of the Lord was in the country of the Philistines seven months. And the Philistines called for the priests and the diviners, saying, What shall we do to the ark of the Lord? Tell us wherewith we shall send it to his place. And they said, If ye send away the ark of the God of Israel, send it not empty, but in any wise return him a trespass offering. Then ye shall be healed, and it shall be known to you why his hand is not removed from you. And they said, What shall be the trespass offering which we shall return to him? They answered, Five golden emeralds, and five golden mice, according to the number of the lords of the Philistines. For one plague was on you all, and on your lords. Wherefore ye shall make images of your emeralds, and images of your mice that mar the land. And ye shall give glory unto the God of Israel. Peradventure he will lighten his hand from off you, and from off your gods, and from off your land. Wherefore then do ye harden your hearts, as the Egyptians and Pharaoh hardened their hearts? When he had wrought wonderfully among them, did they not let the people go, and they departed? Now therefore make a new cart, and take two milch kine, on which there hath come no yoke, and tie the kine to the cart, and bring their calves home from them, and take the ark of the Lord, and lay it upon the cart, and put the jewels of gold which ye return him for a trespass offering, in a coffer by the side thereof, and send it away that it may go. And see, if it goeth up by the way of his own coast to Beth Shemesh, then he hath done us this great evil. But if not, then we shall know that it is not his hand that smote us. It was a chance that happened to us. And the men did so, and took two milch kine, and tied them to the cart, and shut up their calves at home. And they laid the ark of the Lord upon the cart, and the coffer with the mice of gold, and the images of their emeralds. And the kine took the straight way to the way of Beth Shemesh, and went along the highway, lowing as they went, and turned not aside to the right hand, or to the left. And the lords of the Philistines went after them, unto the border of Beth Shemesh, and they of Beth Shemesh were reaping in their wheat harvest in the valley, and they lifted up their eyes, and saw the ark, and rejoiced to see it. And the cart came into the field of Joshua, a Bethshemite, and stood there, where there was a great stone. And they clave the wood of the cart, and offered the kine a burnt offering unto the Lord. When the Levites took down the ark of the Lord, and the coffer that was with it, wherein the jewels of gold were, and put them on the great stone, and the men of Beth Shemesh offered burnt offerings, and sacrificed sacrifices the same day unto the Lord. And when the five lords of the Philistines had seen it, they returned to Ekron 
the same day. And these are the golden emeralds which the Philistines returned for a trespass offering unto the Lord. For Ashdod, one. For Gaza, one. For Ascalon, one. For Gath, one. For Ekron, one. And the golden mice, according to the number of all the cities of the Philistines, belonging to the five lords, both of fenced cities and of country villages, even unto the great stone of Abel, whereon they set down the ark of the Lord, which stone remaineth unto this day in the field of Joshua the Bethshemite. And he smote the men of Bethshemesh, because they had looked into the ark of the Lord. Even he smote of the people fifty thousand and threescore and ten men. And the people lamented, because the Lord had smitten many of the people with a great slaughter. And the men of Beth Shemesh said, Who is able to stand before this holy Lord God? And to whom shall he go up from us? And they sent messengers to the inhabitants of kirjath Jerem, saying, The Philistines have brought again the ark of the Lord. Come ye down, and fetch it up to you. Chapter 7 And the men of kirjath Jerem came, and fetched up the ark of the Lord, and brought it into the house of Abinadab in the hill and sanctified Eleazar his son, to keep the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, while the ark abode in kirjath Jerem, that the time was long, for it was twenty years, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and Ashtaroth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord, and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the children of Israel did put away Baalim and Ashtaroth, and served the Lord only. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray for you unto the Lord. And they gathered together to Mizpah, and drew water, and poured it out before the Lord, and fasted on that day, and said there, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah. And when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together to Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said unto Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a sucking lamb, and offered it for a burnt offering, holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel. And the Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day, upon the Philistines, and discomfited them. And they were smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah, and pursued the Philistines, and smote them, until they came under Bethkar. Then Samuel took a stone, and set it between Mizpah and Shen, and called the name of it Ebenezer saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. So the Philistines were subdued, and they came no more into the coast of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines 
all the days of Samuel. And the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel, from Ekron even unto Gath, and the coasts thereof did Israel deliver out of the hands of the Philistines. And there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. And Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. And he went from year to year in circuit to Bethel and Gilgal and Mizpah, and judged Israel in all those places. And his return was to Ramah, for there was his house. And there he judged Israel, and there he built an altar unto the Lord. Chapter 8 And it came to pass when Samuel was old, that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second, Abia. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre, and took bribes, and perverted judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together, and came to Samuel unto Ramah, and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy nations walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us, like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people, in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them, according to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me, and served other gods. So do they also unto thee. Now, therefore, hearken unto their voice. Howbeit, yet protest solemnly unto them, and shew them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons, and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen. And some shall run before the chariots. And he will appoint him captains over thousands, and captains over fifties, and will set them to ear his ground, and to reap his harvest, and to make his instruments of war, and instruments of his chariots. And he will take your daughters to be confectionaries, and to be cooks, and to be bakers. And he will take your fields, and your vineyards, and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. And he will take the tenth of your seed, and of your vineyards, and give it his officers, and to his servants. And he will take your men servants, and your maid servants, and your goodliest young men, and your asses, and put them to his work. He will take the tenth of your sheep, and ye shall be his servants, and ye shall cry out in that day, because of your king, which ye shall have chosen you, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us, that we also may be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us, and go out before us and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, 
and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city. Chapter 9 Now there was a man of Benjamin, whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zeror, the son of Bechorath, the son of Aphia, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. And he had a son, whose name was Saul, a choice young man, and a goodly. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward he was higher than any of the people. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to Saul his son, Take now one of the servants with thee, and arise, go seek the asses. And he passed through Mount Ephraim, and passed through the land of Shalisha, but they found them not. Then they passed through the land of Shalem, and there they were not. And he passed through the land of the Benjamites, but they found them not. And when they were come to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come, and let us return, lest my father leave caring for the asses, and take thought for us. And he said unto him, Behold, now there is in this city a man of God, and he is an honourable man. All that he saith cometh surely to pass. Now let us go thither. Peradventure he can shew us our way that we should go. Then said Saul to his servant, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man? For the bread is spent in our vessels, and there is not a present to bring to the man of God. What have we? And the servant answered Saul again, and said, Behold, I have here at hand the fourth part of a shekel of silver, that will I give to the man of God, to tell us our way. Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, Come, let us go to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. Then said Saul to his servant, Well said, come, let us go. So they went unto the city where the man of God was. And as they went up the hill to the city, they found young maidens going out to draw water. And he said unto them, Is the seer here? And they answered them, and said, He is. Behold, he is before you. Make haste now, for he came today to the city. For there is a sacrifice of the people to-day in the high place. As soon as ye be come into the city, ye shall straightway find him, before he go up to the high place to eat. For the people will not eat until he come, because he doth bless the sacrifice. And afterwards they eat that be bidden. Now, therefore, get you up, for about this time ye shall find him. And they went up into the city, and when they were come into the city, behold, Samuel came out against them, for to go up to the high place. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow, about this time, I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people Israel that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people, because their cry is come unto me. And when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold the man whom I spake to thee of, this same shall reign over my people. Then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate, and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where the seer's house is? And Samuel answered Saul, and said, 
I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high place, for ye shall eat with me to-day, and to-morrow I will let thee go, and will tell thee all that is in thine heart. And as for thine asses that were lost three days ago, set not thy mind on them, for they are found, and on whom is all the desire of Israel? Is it not on thee, and on all thy father's house? And Saul answered and said, Am I not a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel, and my family the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? Wherefore then speakest thou so to me? And Samuel took Saul and his servant, and brought them into the parlour, and made them sit in the chiefest place among them that were bidden, which were about thirty persons. And Samuel said unto the cook, Bring the portion which I gave thee, of which I said unto thee, Set it by thee. And the cook took up the shoulder, and that which was upon it, and set it before Saul. And Samuel said, Behold that which is left, set it before thee, and eat. For unto this time hath it been kept for thee, since I said, I have invited the people. So Saul did eat with Samuel that day. And when they were come down from the high place into the city, Samuel communed with Saul upon the top of the house. And they arose early. And it came to pass about the spring of the day that Samuel called Saul to the top of the house, saying, Up, that I may send thee away. And Saul arose, and they went out, both of them, he and Samuel, abroad. And as they were going down to the end of the city, Samuel sent to Saul, Bid the servant pass on before us. And he passed on. But stand thou still a while, that I may shew thee the word of God. End of section 27section twenty eight of the holy bible the king james version first samuel chapters ten to seventeen this librivox recording is in the public domain recorded by michael armenta chapter ten then samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? When thou art departed from me to-day, then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulchre in the border of Benjamin at Zalza, and they will say unto thee, The asses which thou wentest to seek are found, and, lo, thy father hath left the care of the asses, and sorroweth for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Then thou shalt go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and there shall meet thee three men going up to God at Bethel, one carrying three kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. And they will salute thee, and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hands. After that thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines. And it shall come to pass, and when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place, with a psaltery and a tabre and a pipe and a harp before them and they shall prophesy. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou shalt be turned into another man. 
and let it be when these signs are come unto thee that thou do as occasion serve thee for god is with thee and thou shalt go down before me to gilgal and behold i will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings seven days shalt thou tarry till i come to thee and shew thee what thou shalt do and it was so that when he had turned his back to go from samuel god gave him another heart and all those signs came to pass that day and when they came thither to the hill behold a company of prophets met him and the spirit of god came upon him and he prophesied among them and it came to pass when all that knew him before time saw that behold he prophesied among the prophets then the people said to one another what is this that is come unto the son of kish is saul also among the prophets and one of the same place answered and said but who is their father therefore it became a proverb is saul also among the prophets and when he had made an end of prophesying he came to the high place and saul's uncle said unto him and to his servant whither went ye and he said to seek the asses and when we saw that they were nowhere we came to samuel and saul's uncle said tell me i pray thee what samuel said unto you and saul said unto his uncle he told us plainly that the asses were found but of the matter of the kingdom whereof samuel spake he told him not and samuel called the people together unto the lord to mizpah and said unto the children of israel thus saith the lord god of israel i brought up israel out of egypt and delivered you out of the hand of the egyptians and out of the hand of all his kingdoms and of them that oppressed you and ye have this day rejected your god who himself saved you out of all your adversities and your tribulations and ye have said unto him nay but set a king over us now therefore present yourselves before the lord by your tribes and by your thousands and when samuel had caused all the tribes of israel to come near the tribe of benjamin was taken when he had caused the tribe of benjamin to come near by their families the family of matri was taken and saul the son of kish was taken and when they sought him he could not be found therefore they inquired of the lord further if the man should yet come thither and the lord answered behold he hath hid himself among the stuff and they ran and fetched him thence and when he stood among the people he was higher than any of the people from his shoulders and upward and samuel said to all the people see ye him whom the lord hath chosen that there is none like him among all the people and all the people shouted and said god save the king then samuel told the people the manner of the kingdom and wrote it in a book and laid it up before the lord and samuel sent all the people away every man to his house and saul also went home to gibeah and there went with him a band of men whose hearts god had touched but the children of belial said how shall this man save us and they despised him 
and brought no presents, but he held his peace. Chapter 11 Then Nahash the Ammonite came up, and encamped against Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said unto Nahash, Make a covenant with us, and we will serve thee. And Nahash the Ammonite answered them, On this condition will I make a covenant with you, that I may thrust out all your right eyes, and lay it for a reproach upon all Israel. And the elders of Jabesh said unto him, Give us seven days' respite, that we may send messengers unto all the coasts of Israel, and then, if there be no man to save us, we will come out to thee. Then came the messengers to Gibeah of Saul, and told the tidings in the ears of the people. And all the people lifted up their voices and wept. And, behold, Saul came after the herd out of the field. And Saul said, What aileth the people that they weep? Then they told him the tidings of the men of Jabesh. And the Spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard those tidings, and his anger was kindled greatly. And he took a yoke of oxen, and hewed them in pieces, and sent them throughout all the coasts of Israel by the hands of messengers, saying, Whosoever cometh not forth after Saul and after Samuel, so shall it be done unto his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell on the people, and they came out with one consent. And when he numbered them in Bezek, the children of Israel were three hundred thousand, and the men of Judah thirty thousand. And they said unto the messengers that came, Thus shall ye say unto the men of Jabesh Gilead, Tomorrow, by that time, the sun be hot, ye shall have help. And the messengers came, and shewed it to the men of Jabesh, and they were glad. Therefore the men of Jabesh said, Tomorrow we will come out unto you, and ye shall do with us all that seemeth good unto you. And it was so on the morrow, that Saul put the people in three companies, and they came into the midst of the host in the morning watch, and slew the Ammonites, until the heat of the day. And it came to pass, that they which remained were scattered, so that two of them were not left together. And the people said unto Samuel, who is it that said, Shall Saul reign over us? Bring the men, that we may put them to death. And Saul said, There shall not a man be put to death this day. For today the Lord hath wrought salvation in Israel. Then said Samuel to the people, Come, and let us go to Gilgal, and renew the kingdom there. And all the people went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. And there they sacrificed sacrifices of peace offerings before the Lord, and all the men of Israel rejoiced greatly. Chapter 12 and Samuel said unto all Israel, Behold, I have hearkened unto your voice in all that ye said unto me, and have made a king over you. And now, behold, the king walketh before you, and I am old and grey-headed, and, behold, my sons are with you, and I have walked before you from my childhood unto this day. Behold, here I am, witness against me 
before the Lord, and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? Or whose ass have I taken? Or whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed? Or of whose hand have I received any bribe to blind mine eyes therewith? And I will restore it unto you. And they said, Thou hast not defrauded us, nor oppressed us, neither hast thou taken aught of any man's hand. And he said unto them, The Lord is witness against you, and his anointed is witness this day, that ye have not found aught in my hand. And they answered, He is witness. Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron, and that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Now, therefore, stand still, that I may reason with you before the Lord of all the righteous acts of the Lord, which he did to you and to your fathers. When Jacob was come into Egypt, and your fathers cried unto the Lord. Then the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, which brought forth your fathers out of Egypt, and made them dwell in this place. And when they forgot the Lord their God, he sold them into the hand of Sisera, captain of the host of Hazor, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab. And they fought against them. And they cried unto the Lord, and said, we have sinned, because we have forsaken the Lord, and have served Balaam and Ashtaroth. But now deliver us out of the hand of our enemies, and we will serve thee. And the Lord sent Jerubbaal, and Bedan, and Jephthah, and Samuel, and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side, and he dwelled safe. And when he saw that Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, came against you. Ye said unto me, Nay, but a king shall reign over us, when the Lord your God was your king. Now, therefore, behold the king whom ye have chosen, and whom ye have desired. And behold, the Lord hath set a king over you. If ye will fear the Lord, and serve him, and obey his voice, and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall both ye, and also the king that reigneth over you, continue following the Lord your God. But if ye will not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you, as it was against your fathers. Now, Therefore stand and see this great thing, which the Lord will do before your eyes. Is it not wheat harvest to-day? I will call unto the Lord, and he shall send thunder and rain, that ye may perceive and see that your wickedness is great, which ye have done in the sight of the Lord, in asking you a king. So Samuel called unto the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day. And all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. And all the people said unto Samuel, Pray for thy servants unto the Lord thy God, that we die not. For we have added unto all our sins this evil, to ask us a king and Samuel said unto the people, Fear not, ye have done all this wickedness, yet turn not aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart, and turn ye not aside, for then should ye go after vain things, which cannot profit nor deliver, for they are vain. For the Lord will not forsake his people, for his great name's sake, because it hath pleased the Lord to make you his people. Moreover, as for me, 
God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things he hath done for you. But if ye shall still do wickedly, ye shall be consumed, both ye and your king. Chapter 13 Saul reigned one year, and when he had reigned two years over Israel, Saul chose him three thousand men of Israel, whereof two thousand were with Saul in Michmash and in Mount Bethel and a thousand were with Jonathan in Gibeah of Benjamin. And the rest of the people he sent, every man to his tent. And Jonathan smote the garrison of the Philistines that was in Gibeah, and the Philistines heard of it. And Saul blew the trumpet throughout all the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear. And all Israel heard, say that Saul had smitten a garrison of the Philistines, and that Israel also was had in abomination with the Philistines. And the people were called together after Saul to Gilgal. And the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel, thirty thousand chariots and six thousand horsemen, and people as the sand which is on the seashore in multitude. And they came up, and pitched in Michmash, eastward from Beth-haven. When the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, for the people were distressed, then the people did hide themselves in caves and in thickets, and in rocks and in high places and in pits. And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and all the people following him, trembling. And he tarried seven days, according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass, that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. And Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together to make mash. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel for ever, but now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. And Samuel arose, and gat him up from Gilgal unto Gibeah of Benjamin. And Saul numbered the people that were present with him, about six hundred men. And Saul and 
Jonathan, his son, and the people that were present with them, abode in Gibeah of Benjamin. But the Philistines encamped in Michmash, and the spoilers came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies. One company turned unto the way that leadeth to Ophrah, unto the land of Shual, and another company turned the way to Beth Horon, and another company turned to the way of the border that looketh to the valley of Zeboam toward the wilderness. Now there was no smith found throughout all the land of Israel, for the Philistines said, Lest the Hebrews make them swords or spears. But all the Israelites went down to the Philistines to sharpen every man his share and his coulter and his axe and his mattock. Yet they had a file for the mattocks and for the coulters and for the forks and for the axes and to sharpen the goads. So it came to pass in the day of battle that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people that were with Saul and Jonathan. But with Saul and with Jonathan, his son, was there found. And the garrison of the Philistines went out to the passage of Michmash. Chapter 14 Now it came to pass upon a day that Jonathan the son of Saul said unto the young man that bare his armor, Come, let us go over to the Philistines' garrison that is on the other side. But he told not his father, and Saul tarried in the uttermost part of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree, which is in Migran, and the people that were with him were about six hundred men and Ahiah, the son of Ahitub, Ichabod's brother, the son of Phinehas, the son of Eli, the Lord's priest in Shiloh, wearing an ephod. And the people knew not that Jonathan was gone. And between the passages by which Jonathan sought to go over unto the Philistines' garrison, there was a sharp rock on the one side, and a sharp rock on the other side, and the name of the one was Boses, and the name of the other Sina. The forefront of the one was situate northward over against Michmash, and the other southward over against Gibeah. And Jonathan said to the young man that bare his armor, Come, and let us go over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised it may be that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. And his armor-bearer said unto him, Do all that is in thine heart. Turn thee, behold, I am with thee, according to thy heart. Then said Jonathan, Behold, we will pass over unto these men, and we will discover ourselves unto them. If they say thus unto us, Tarry until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place, and will not go up unto them. But if they say thus, Come up unto us, then we will go up. For the Lord hath delivered them into our hand, and this shall be a sign unto us. And both of them discovered themselves unto the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, Behold, the Hebrews come forth out of the holes where they had hid themselves. And the men of the garrison answered Jonathan and his armor-bearer, and said, Come up to us, and we will shew you a thing. And Jonathan said unto his armor-bearer, Come up after me, for the Lord hath delivered them into the hand of Israel. 
and Jonathan climbed up upon his hands and upon his feet, and his armor-bearer after him. And they fell before Jonathan, and his armor-bearer slew after him. And that first slaughter, which Jonathan and his armor-bearer made, was about twenty men within, as it were, an half-acre of land, which a yoke of oxen might plough. And there was trembling in the host, in the field, and among all the people, the garrison and the spoilers, they also trembled, and the earth quaked, so it was a very great trembling. And the watchmen of Saul in Gibeah of Benjamin looked, and, behold, the multitude melted away, and they went on, beating down one another. Then said Saul unto the people that were with him, Number now, and see who is gone from us. And when they had numbered, behold, Jonathan and his armor-bearer were not there. And Saul said unto Ahiah, Bring hither the ark of God. For the ark of God was at that time with the children of Israel. And it came to pass, while Saul talked unto the priest, that the noise that was in the host of the Philistines went on and increased. And Saul said unto the priest, Withdraw thine hand. And Saul and all the people that were with him assembled themselves, and they came to the battle, and behold, every man's sword was against his fellow, and there was a very great discomfiture. Moreover, the Hebrews that were with the Philistines before that time, which went up with them into the camp from the country round about, even they also turned to be with the Israelites that were with Saul and Jonathan. Likewise, all the men of Israel which had hid themselves in Mount Ephraim, when they heard that the Philistines fled, even they also followed hard after them in the battle. So the Lord saved Israel that day. And the battle passed over unto beth -haven. And the men of Israel were distressed that day. For Saul had adjured the people, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any food until evening, that I may be avenged on mine enemies. So none of the people tasted any food. And all they of the land came to a wood, and there was honey upon the ground. And when the people were come into the wood, Behold, the honey dropped, but no man put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. But Jonathan heard not when his father charged the people with the oath. Wherefore he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand, and dipped it in an honeycomb, and put his hand to his mouth, and his eyes were enlightened. Then answered one of the people, and said, Thy father straightly charged the people with an oath, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any food this day. And the people were faint. Then said Jonathan, My father hath troubled the land. See, I pray you, how mine eyes have been enlightened, because I tasted a little of this honey. How much more, if happily the people had eaten freely to-day of the spoil of their enemies which they found, for had there not been now a much greater slaughter among the Philistines? And they smote the Philistines that day from Michmash to Ajalon, and the people were very faint. And the people flew upon the spoil, and took sheep, and oxen, and calves, and slew them on the ground, and the people did eat them with the blood. 
Then they told Saul, saying, Behold, the people sin against the Lord, in that they eat with the blood. And he said, Ye have transgressed. Roll a great stone unto me this day. And Saul said, Disperse yourselves among the people, and say unto them, Bring me hither every man his ox, and every man his sheep, and slay them here, and eat, and sin not against the Lord in eating with the blood. And all the people brought every man his ox with him that night, and slew them there. And Saul built an altar unto the Lord. The same was the first altar that he built unto the Lord. And Saul said, Let us go down after the Philistines by night, and spoil them until the morning light, and let us not leave a man of them. And they said, Do whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. Then said the priest, Let us draw near hither unto God. And Saul asked counsel of God. Shall I go down after the Philistines? Wilt thou deliver them into the hand of Israel? But he answered him not that day. And Saul said, Draw ye near hither, all the chief of the people, and know and see wherein this sin hath been this day. For as the Lord liveth, which saveth Israel, though it be in Jonathan, my son, he shall surely die. But there was not a man among all the people that answered him. Then he said unto all Israel, Be ye on one side, and I and Jonathan, my son, will be on the other side. And the people said unto Saul, Do what seemeth good unto thee. Therefore Saul said unto the Lord God of Israel, Give a perfect lot. And Saul and Jonathan were taken, but the people escaped. And Saul said, Cast lots between me and Jonathan my son. And Jonathan was taken. Then Saul said to Jonathan, Tell me what thou hast done. And Jonathan told him, and said, I did but taste a little honey with the end of the rod that was in mine hand, and lo, I must die. And Saul answered, God do so, and more also, for thou shalt surely die, Jonathan. And the people said unto Saul, Shall Jonathan die? who hath wrought this great salvation in Israel? God forbid! As the Lord liveth, there shall not one hair of his head fall to the ground, for he hath wrought with God this day. So the people rescued Jonathan, that he died not. Then Saul went up from following the Philistines, and the Philistines went to their own place. So Saul took the kingdom over Israel, and fought against all his enemies on every side, against Moab, and against the children of Ammon, and against Edom, and against the kings of Zobah, and against the Philistines. And whithersoever he turned himself, he vexed them. And he gathered an host, and smote the Amalekites, and delivered Israel out of the hands of them that spoiled them. Now the sons of Saul were Jonathan, and Ishuai, and Malkishua, and the names of his two daughters were these, the name of the firstborn, Mirab, and the name of the younger, Michal. 
and the name of Saul's wife was Ahinoam, the daughter of Ahimaaz, and the name of the captain of his host was Abner, the son of Ner, Saul's uncle. And Kish was the father of Saul, and Ner, the father of Abner, was the son of Abiel. And there was sore war against the Philistines all the days of Saul. And when Saul saw any strong man or any valiant man, he took him unto him. Chapter 15 Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek, and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. And Saul gathered the people together, and numbered them in Telaim, two hundred thousand footmen, and ten thousand men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of Amalek, and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go, depart, get you down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For ye shewed kindness to all the children of Israel, when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah, until thou comest to shore that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive, and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag, and the best of the sheep, and the oxen, and of the fatlings, and the lambs, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them. But every thing that was vile and refuse, that they destroyed utterly. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, it repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me, and hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Saul, and he cried unto the Lord all night. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place, and is gone about, and passed on, and gone down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleating of the sheep in mine ears, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, when thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? And the Lord sent thee on a journey, and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord? 
but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord, and thy words, because I feared the people, and obeyed their voice. Now, therefore, I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle, and it rent. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and hath given it to a neighbor of thine, that is better than thou. And also the strength of Israel will not lie, nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honour me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people, and before Israel, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord thy God. So Samuel turned again after Saul, and Saul worshipped the Lord. Then said Samuel, Bring ye hither to me Agag, the king of the Amalekites. And Agag came unto him delicately, and Agag said, Surely the bitterness of death is past. And Samuel said, As thy sword hath made women childless, so shall thy mother be childless among women. And Samuel hewed Agag in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house to Gibeah of Saul. And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul. And the Lord repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. Chapter 16 And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil, and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite. For I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an heifer with thee, and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will shew thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, 
and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves, and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons, and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass, when they were come, that he looked on Eliab, and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as a man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab, and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shema to pass by, and he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Again Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel, and Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent, and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and withal of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil, and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servants said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player on a harp. And it shall come to pass, when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants, and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. Wherefore, Saul sent messengers unto Jesse, and said, Send me David thy son, which is with the sheep. And Jesse took an ass laden with bread, and a bottle of wine, and a kid, and sent them by David his son unto Saul. And David came to Saul, and stood before him, and he loved him greatly and he became his armor-bearer. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. And it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Chapter 17 Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle, 
and were gathered together at Shoko, which belongeth to Judah, and pitched between Shoko and Azika in Aphesdemim. Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together, and pitched by the valley of Elah, and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. There was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had an helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed six hundred shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine, and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me, and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants, and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man, that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem Judah, whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons. And the men went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons that went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and next unto him Abinadab, and the third Shema. And David was the youngest. And the three eldest followed Saul. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening, and presented himself forty days. And Jesse said unto David his son, Take now for thy brethren a ephah of this parched corn, and these ten loaves, and run to the camp of thy brethren, and carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning, and left the sheep with a keeper, and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench, as the host was going forth to the light, and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage, and ran into the army, and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. And David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up, that it shall be, that the man who killeth him 
the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in israel and david spake to the men that stood by him saying what shall be done to the man that killeth this philistine and taketh away the reproach from israel for who is this uncircumcised philistine that he should defy the armies of the living god and the people answered him after this manner saying so shall it be done to the man that killeth him and eliab his eldest brother heard when he spake unto the men and eliab's anger was kindled against david and he said why camest thou down hither and with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness i know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle and david said what have i now done is there not a cause and he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner and the people answered him again after the former manner and when the words were heard which david spake they rehearsed them before saul and he sent for him and david said to saul let no man's heart fail because of him thy servant will go and fight with this philistine and saul said to david thou art not able to go against this philistine to fight with him for thou art but a youth and he a man of war from his youth and david said unto saul thy servant kept his father's sheep and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock and i went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth and when he arose against me i caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him thy servant slew both the lion and the bear and this uncircumcised philistine shall be as one of them seeing he hath defied the armies of the living god david said moreover the lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear he will deliver me out of the hand of this philistine and saul said unto david go and the lord be with thee and saul armed david with his armor and he put an helmet of brass upon his head also he armed him with a coat of mail and david girded his sword upon his armor and he assayed to go for he had not proved it and david said unto saul i cannot go with these for i have not proved them and david put them off him and he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag which he had even in a scrip and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the philistine and the philistine came on and drew near unto david and the man that bare the shield went before him and when the philistine looked about and saw david he disdained him for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance and the philistine said unto david am i a dog that thou comest to me with staves and the philistine cursed david by his gods and the philistine said to david come to me and i will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field then said david to the philistine thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield but i come to thee 
in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass, when the Philistine arose and came, and drew nigh to meet David, that David hastened, and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag, and took thence a stone, and slang it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling, and with a stone, and smote the Philistine, and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine, and took his sword, and drew it out of the sheaf thereof, and slew him, and cut off his head therewith, and when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And all the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines, until thou come to the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to Sharaim, even unto Gath and unto Ekron. And the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistines, and they spoiled their tents. And David took the head of the Philistine, and brought it to Jerusalem. But he put his armor in his tent. And when Saul saw David go forth against the Philistine, he said unto Abner, the captain of the host, Abner! Whose son is this youth? And Abner said, As thy soul liveth, O king, I cannot tell. And the king said, Inquire thou whose son the stripling is. And as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, Abner took him and brought him before Saul, with the head of the Philistine in his hand. And Saul said to him, whose son art thou thou young man and david answered i am the son of thy servant jesse the bethlehemite end of section twenty eight